Welcome to all my combo lords. I never know exactly when that stream is going to load the start, so it either always cuts off my first word in a stream, or I have three seconds of pausing and staring at the camera before it starts, which is more common. Maybe I need to be doing a cool activity when I start these streams. The type of activity that would look cool whether you saw a few seconds of it or many seconds of it. Then whenever the stream actually begins, I will be doing a cool thing instead of trying to time my first line right. In any case, welcome back to the Combo Classroom, where, as usual, we continue to gather upgrades, like these globes we're going to talk about today, along with some other fun historical facts. Now, for anybody who just watches part of this in the future and ends up not watching the whole thing, reminder that... Although our streams can be on the more casual question and answer bonus fact type end, I have released a new main episode on my Combo Class channel just a day or two ago about the aperiodic monotile discoveries, not just the one you may have heard about a few months ago, but also the one from just about two weeks ago. And I have some more good episodes cooking up. Now, shut your own globe! It's a $1 globe, but I love this thing. Okay, we're going to keep the globe safe. Now, here, shut your eyes for five seconds if you don't want a clue of the next episode. Might have something to do with that. That's a strange clue of what we're filming next. Now, try and decode it and see where you can go with the logic of that if you didn't shut your eyes. I also have another episode planned about Fermat's Last Theorem, because it's about to be 30 years since this super old, ancient, classic mathematical problem was finally proven. So we're going to do a little anniversary. Oh, squirrel. Okay. Let's put out some bird seed for the squirrel in case it wants to come back. If I don't have any fresh nuts for it right now. I need to, maybe when I run inside for a break in a minute, I'll try and uh, see if we got any more unsalted pecans or pecans for that thing. But that squirrel and its buddies are friends with me. So let's give it a little bird seed, which it also likes. Where did I stick my bird seed stash? All right, bird seed time. Where'd the bird seed go? Where's my bird seed? Okay, I, I'll need to find the bird seed later to give the squirrel some. Maybe I'll run inside in a minute and grab it a nut. Now, those squirrels are a newer generation, quite playful, and we will see them quite a bit because they haven't gotten soured to the human experience and all my neighbors seem nice to squirrels. So perhaps this generation of local squirrels that just wanders around our series of backyards, eating our fruit and stuff in small quantities, Maybe they won't get soured to the human experience in the same way that some street squirrels do. Now, welcome to everybody here, and I really appreciate everybody who says that they like my videos, that they help them learn and stuff. I have many goals in life, but some of my main goals on this channel are certainly to teach people things they didn't know before, to make people appreciate life more, to give people problem solving and intuitive thinking skills that will help them approach problems in the world more, to make people appreciative of things in various ways, and of course to tell you about all the strange number theory concepts that I'm obsessed with. This bonus video is going to be slightly less of uh, pure math because when we apply math in this video, it may be in a more historical context. A few things that I planned for this video involved the last... <laughs> This is sort of a follow-up on the last two streams I did. Two streams ago, I was talking about this funny book of 100 Proofs the Earth's Not a Globe that was published in the 1800s. Not only, you know, obviously Flat Earth is wrong, but it's even for Flat Earth <laughs> poorly written. It's like some old-school Flat Earth. So, we're going to... 
maybe need to pull that up again while we investigate the globes, because what I was curious about these was which uh, parts of the globes are labeled differently than each other or than they currently would. Which countries on these have changed in stuff? Like, for example, this is a really old globe, so it shows Pangea. No, I'm kidding. But, you know, if you really had an old enough globe, uh, there's a theory that probably the Earth had its continents in one more clumped shape before they separated. So, yeah, maybe we have such an old school globe, it shows that formation. Now, more realistically, we probably have one that, like, calls Czechoslovakia something different or something, but it would still be interesting to see what differences these globes have from each other and from what a modernly made globe might have. Of course, there's also the difference between globes and maps where, although a globe can be pretty accurate in its sizing if it needs to be because the Earth is close to a sphere's shape, it's an oblate spheroid, a map cannot. There are paradoxes that emerge when you try and flatten a 3D thing perfectly, and you cannot make a perfect projection of it. Uh, these are just all the Pangea results. Um, but in general, you can't make a perfect projection into the globe without making some exceptions of things that get shrunk or inflated. Now, I don't have a Pangea globe. That would be pretty sick. A hypothetical globe of what the Earth maybe used to look like way long ago. That'd be a pretty sick globe. Oh, I need a Mars globe. I need, I need other planets. Why do we have two Earths before we've even gotten any other planets? I need a Pluto globe. I don't care if they call it a planet or not anymore. When I was a kid, Pluto was a planet. Pluto is unofficially the ninth planet. I grew up with it being a planet. Now, maybe some of you kids grew up learning there were just eight planets, but uh, when I grew up, there was a ninth planet they kicked out later. It makes sense, because if you call Pluto a planet, you'd have to call a ton of dwarf planets planets, and the dwarf planets are, you know, it's easier to not categorize them all as planets and say there's eight plus a bunch of those, as opposed to counting all of them. We don't even maybe know how many there are. The small ones can slip by in the big amount of space between things in space. But yeah, let's make a one-to-one -one Pluto globe. That'll take up, you know, a couple cities worth of Earth only. I think a one-to-one -one Pluto globe is worth it. So uh, these globes I got for very cheap, ironically, right after the live stream about flat Earths. I passed by a yard sale and saw these globes. This one was $1, this one was $2, or maybe vice versa. It was $3 for two globes. What a deal. So I also saw my old friend who I called Disaster Man, who, oh man, you guys don't know the lore. But yeah, so I uh, coincidentally got these globes. Another thing that is a follow-up of a previous stream is while we're talking about history, I wanted to talk about some more history of some strange mathematicians. I almost called this stream something like, Crazy Mathematician Talks About Even Crazier Mathematicians, because I want to mention a few interesting cases from history. The last stream was about this dude, Ted Kaczynski, also known as the Unabomber, a mathematician who became what I termed in the title to oversimplify it, an evil person. Obviously an oversimplification, but he did some really bad things. So, you know, if we're, if we're going to allow the word evil in, we'll apply it to a few mathematicians here and there. I figured, for one, there's another um, kind of evil math, not, you know, in this case, even maybe more on the crazy, insane end, as opposed to the calculated, deliberated end. But there's another murderous mathematician in that guy's same field that I thought we should look at, as well as the fact that I really should have done this. Oh, there's a bird eating the bird seed. Okay, we usually do squirrel breaks, but look at this bird. Hold up, I gotta do this really quietly. Do you see the bird? Oh, it went away. I don't know if you saw the bird before it went away. 
A bird was eating the bird seed. Okay, they'll come back. The birds are more spooked by sound than the squirrels. They often come right when I end the live streams and stop talking. So maybe we need to pause for a few seconds once in a while and see if a bird comes. Now, what we will um, also look at is in that last stream, I forgot to mention that when I was looking at the mathematical contributions of the Unabomber before he turned, uh, you know, harmful to humanity, he published a few math papers. I realized that one of my favorite authors wrote a passage or like a little list about that. And so I figured we were going to see what Clifford Pickover had to say about the question we asked in the last topic that I honestly was mostly on your folks level of just researching it for one of the first times, seeing, OK, this guy died. He was apparently a mathematician. I, you know, found the papers, but we're going to get a slightly better description of that, possibly from this author. I'm going to read, you know, a passage here and there. I hope he doesn't mind. Uh, if anyone minds, I imagine it would be the publisher. If I read stuff from books, publishers, get off my case. I bet the authors are okay with it. I promote people buying books. So everybody, you know, consider buying some Clifford Pickover books. I'm about to read a little bit of his thing for free. He's a great modern mathematician. I love this dude. Uh, he's He reminds me a lot of some of my favorite authors of all time, Martin Gardner and Raymond Smullyan, who... Our Martin Gardner wrote columns in Scientific American as well as these other math and logic and various sorts of recreational math columns. Brilliant types of overall columns and books that are compiled from those and other books he wrote. And Raymond Smullyan is a little more underrated, wrote a lot of logic puzzles and cool stuff, and this dude was awesome. And Clifford Pickover reminds me of them to a degree where he'll write these books that are filled with playful ways of approaching mathematical topics almost through analogies and stories that end up including a lot of little personal investigations here and there that some have become coined and become actual terms. A lot of mathematical nicknames for numbers came from someone like Clifford Pickover. In fact, there are words that Clifford Pickover wrote in this book, among other of his many books, that are now used by other sources. So he's an inspiration to me. He is just like a one of those people who plays around and studies and writes about his explorations and his studies in conjunction and a lot of really cool stuff in these books. Now, I remembered that, hey, this one called Wonders of Numbers, that's a pretty awesome book. I recommend people buy their own copy. You know, I bought a used copy of all the books I have here. I cannot afford to buy like a math textbook new. Trust me, I'm on your folks level money wise. A math textbook would wipe me out monetarily. But you can buy used math books of certain types, sometimes for like as low as $5 online, like sometimes even counting shipping. So look out for your used math books online. Paper used math books, love those. Whenever I have like $50 that I'm willing to like splurge on myself, I'm like, okay, I can probably spend that 50 bucks on like seven nice math books that they're gonna be used. They might have a highlighter mark here or there, but I can get like seven, eight books for that and then have these paper things to work with. Now, a lot of brilliant chapters in here, and I'm going to look for the one about the Unabomber because I thought that was something I should have included in our last stream that we might as well include in the stream after. And there's a little chapter here, chapter 40 of Wonders of Numbers, is about the Unabomber's 10 most mathematical technical papers. <clears throat> By the way, to whoever can't buy his books, he also writes online stuff. So I believe he also runs something along the lines of a blog or something. So you can tune in to Clifford Pickover. Other ways, I recommend this guy. He's awesome. Now, I would love to talk to him someday. Someday I'll reach out to him when we have some more combo lords, you know, making this look even more like a legit enterprise. Then I will, I'll reach out to people like him because he is still around doing cool stuff. Now... Ooh, so they got some quotes from him, and here's the, the paragraph that Clifford Pickover describes 
pretty quickly about the Unabomber to introduce it. He says, Ted Kaczynski, also known as the Unabomber, was a mathematically adept Harvard graduate. See chapter 31. I wonder if there's something earlier there about Harvard or something. After teaching for two years and publishing mathematical papers that put him on a tenure track at one of the nation's most prestigious universities, he suddenly quit, spent nearly half his life in the woods, and used homemade bombs to kill three strangers and injure 22 others. So, somebody says it's weird that I'm obsessed with him. I'm not sure why you think that. The first time I ever mentioned him was last stream when he died, literally a day before last stream, so... Uh, I've never mentioned this guy before he died within the last week. So I'm not sure I would say that's obsessed. Uh, somebody said they've read that, just going through a few comments now, countries on globes are not to scale. Yeah, I don't think they are. I mean, more like there is a way we could try and make it to scale, but I don't think they make Antarctica as big as it is and stuff like that, because otherwise it might be harder to read stuff. They, and the mountains are definitely bumpier than they actually would be in places. So there's some glitches like that. And to note, to whoever leaves Bible quotes, I know some of you like to do that, be sparse with them. If you do them here and there, they get to stay. You know, you can quote the Bible here and there. But once in a while, people flood the things with that. When I made a video about how 666 was a triangular number recently, this one guy replied to every comment with a Bible quote. That's not going to help your cause, folks. That's really not going to help the cause. Um, and someone says, I bought a book of him. This is not the Unabomber. Clifford Pickover. I don't know if you misinterpreted that weirdly. Clifford Pickover is one of my favorite authors and has been for a while and wrote one chapter about this guy um, that I already had this book that I should have used last time. Now, when he, he quotes here that this guy had at least 10 notable mathematical contributions. Now, they're called boundary functions, another proof of Wedderburn's theorem, distributivity and negative one times x equals negative x, boundary functions for functions defined in a disk, distributivity and negative one x equals negative x. The first one was proposed problem. This is problem and solution. Then on a boundary property of continuous functions, then note on a problem of Allen Sutcliffe or Sutcliffe, then the set of cur curvilinear convergence of a continuous function defined in the interior of a cube. Then we got boundary functions and sets of curvilinear convergence for continuous fr functions. Then boundary functions for bounded harmonic functions. There's all these things about boundary functions in there. Now, one thing that we noted is that this guy was studying complex variables. Some would call some of this complex analysis for the field. And he was studying the unit disk in the complex plane. That was what we saw in the last stream when we looked up his paper. Now, you want to know something weird? Uh, folks, if you study complex uh, analysis, be careful about your morals because... It seems that the other main mathematician who has murdered somebody and also published a notable math in history was studying a very similar thing. So uh, all you conspiracy theorists out there, cook me up something funny about how you think uh, there's some link here. But the guy who uh, the other guy we're going to talk about here. Andre Bloch, or Bloch, or I don't know how you pronounce it exactly. The other mathematician I wanted to note who has become, like, quote, evil in a simplified way because he killed some of his family members is um, also studied something really similar. When I looked up this guy's main thing, uh, let me pull it up on... Wolfram Math World, that's a good site. Um, they had something about it.
is there's this thing called bloke constant related to some of these things, I assume, because uh, he was studying similar stuff that's about the unit disk with complex functions. Same thing that the Unabomber was studying. So that's pretty wacky. You know, that uh, the two main notable mathematicians who also were murderers, both were studying the unit disk on the complex plane. Hmm. Maybe be careful if you study that one. So what is the story of this other guy? Now, there's actually a few other mathematicians I thought we'd touch on today who have not evil stories who are just like wacky weirdos. Uh, I'm sure the Unabomber and Andre Bloke, however you pronounce it, are also wacky weirdos, but there on the end, we are going to uh, note that we don't aspire to be alike because uh, you see, this guy went crazy in a way that made him uh, kill multiple of his family members. That's really bad. Now, then he was committed to an asylum and from that asylum, he wrote some of his papers. And a lot of these great mathematicians, we've talked about Polya before, a bunch of mathematicians. He never said he was in a psych ward. He just told them, hey, here's some new math findings. And he was still finding stuff. So maybe he does go to show that prison systems should be closer to rehabilitation systems. Uh, and maybe, you know, then these crazy mathematicians won't be able to hurt people, but they can keep publishing. Now, I like this one. It says, according to Polya, who's a George Polya, uh, he had the habit of dating his letters with April 1st, regardless of when they were written. Not only is that somewhat cryptic, but it's April Fool's Day, which we're huge fans of. He said everything was April Fool's Day, which is like some meta April Fool's prank to say that everything you did was April Fool's Day. It's some like reverse one. Now, the disc is cool. Don't worry if we like the unit disc. I like the unit disc too. So uh, we don't have to worry just because we like the unit disc that we're going to do really bad things. But it's a sort of funny note that both of the murderous mathematicians that are often mentioned in history, uh, both were studying that particular thing. So now... There's a lot of other cool mathematicians who have, I looked up similarly, maybe I'll mention with ma which mathematicians have been arrested, which is, you know, not necessarily as a sign of evilness the way that murder is. Obviously, I know, people didn't like I used the word evil in the thing. I know you can argue that nothing is evil, but then you're just throwing out the word so even though the world is this weird continuum of morality and in a way nothing is like pure evil or pure good and you can't quantify how much of what it is, we're going to use the word for something. It's, words have a, a use. So I'm going to have to call these folks evil because they murdered. So uh, by the way, I hope YouTube doesn't get too mad about me saying the words like that. A lot of YouTubers are like, they unalived themselves or something like that. We're not going to be that dodgy with our words. I bite my tongue a bit with swear words, but we're going to have to say like death and bomb and kill and stuff. If we're talking about stuff like this, obviously it's not a recommendation. We're looking at these people as faulty people. Uh, I demonetized the last stream uh, because I thought YouTube, I mean, I just like started off with demonetized because I thought YouTube would get mad at me saying those words a lot. And then it's like my most viewed stream. And I'm like, damn it. Normally I make like $2 on a stream. I would have made like $5. <laughs> so this one I love monetize. If YouTube gets mad, they get mad. Uh, but I love you, YouTube. Now, this guy did publish some important stuff. This Andre Bloke, which we're not really ready to jump into because I've barely done episodes yet about complex numbers. I've done a tiny bit let alone what's called complex analysis, where we're looking at these functions, and you got to know a lot to be able to actually do complex analysis, let alone under, understanding it's easier than doing it. But, you know, it takes a lot to even understand it. Now, 
Uh, to whoever asked why it's called a disk, yeah, it's basically the circle it's filled in. So the unit disk is basically a filled in circle on the complex plane. Now, some other mathematicians, when I looked up who got arrested, there's a number. A lot of mathematicians were political something or another problems. So a lot of them got arrested for political reasons. And one of the others that I saw that had a somewhat similar name to this guy, I think they have the same first name, Andre, is this guy, it's a little unknown to what degree these stories are embellished, but I was reading some stories about the guy who was arrested for a political reason and almost killed. And I don't, the bit that some sources then said was a little exaggerated maybe was whether he was actually almost killed or not. But this guy was um, arrested as a political prisoner before he was freed. And then one of the most classic people who was a mathematician arrested as a political prisoner is Evariste Galois. Probably still butchering the pronunciation even when I tried to know it, but Galois is somewhat around the pronunciation. Now, this guy in his early 20s died for reasons we'll get into. And by the time he died in his early 20s, looks like he was 21. Or was he 20? It looks like he was 20. So when he died, when he died when he was 20, he had published right before that the foundations of what's called Galois theory that other mathematicians built on. That's the foundation of these massive results, such as there is no pure formula to solve any fifth degree polynomial, but there is for degrees four and less. There's these massive results in all sorts of fields that stem from this guy's work, Galois. However, not only did he spend some of those 20 years arrested as a math, as a political prisoner, but then he died in a literal duel. He literally got in a duel. Now, some people think that it's a conspiracy and that due to the fact that he was also pissing off the government and was a political prisoner, that he was offed by the government and they covered it up with a fake duel. So who knows? Now, I think that's less likely. I think it was a duel. People read letters that it seemed to be over a lost love or a love that settled for someone else or some something related to uh, romance, perhaps gone wrong. And there was a strange duel. And right before it, Galois wrote all these letters to people that helped solidify the foundations of Galois theory. Goes off, dies in a duel. I believe he was shot. Yeah. So... Yep, shot, left, found by a passing farmer, and then died. And there were riots at his funeral because uh, the people didn't like the government such a, it, and thought he represented that cause. So, his last words were apparently to his younger brother, Don't weep, Alfred. I need all my courage to die at 20, in his modern language. Now, not from a duel, but I came very close to death about two and a half years ago. In fact, I see it as a death and a rebirth of sorts because I actually came very close to dying and was in the hospital for a while. And so uh, I have a weird feeling that I accidentally like... Uh, joined that 27 club of rock stars or whatever, but then somehow glitched back into existence and got to make combo class because there was an alternate timeline where I died on January 17th, 2021. Now we're not in that timeline. So somehow we glitched to the timeline where I didn't join the Galois club or the 27 club or whatever. And we got to make combo class 
And we are about one-sixth of the way through grade negative two right now. Now, there's a lot of other mathematicians with very strange lives, and we're going to take a break from looking at those to chat for a moment. But when we come back, the one we're going to look at is Paul Erdish, who is not... Um, Kind of like Galois, we have moved on from the ones I would assign the term evil to. And so Galois was just sort of a political activist and punk who got into a little duel because he was a punk and gotten killed himself by accident. Didn't kill himself, but got himself killed by accident. So Galois was basically just like a really smart punk. He was not uh, necessarily evil in the way that these other mathematicians who consciously murdered people were. Uh, another even less uh, any, well, I guess Galois, there's no evil I would put in there. So another like that, that is, I wouldn't call evil, is Erdish. Paul Erdish had a very strange life that I believe is mentioned in the Clifford Pickover book and is um, something that we'll look at the Wikipedia has a good stretch on, as well as I just know some facts I want to share about it. So Paul Erdish was one of my favorite mathematicians and had a very surreal life and not in the way that I don't think he ever got arrested or anything, but does involve some strange things. So we'll look at that story in a minute, taking a peek back at our chat for a minute and a lot of good comments. Somebody comment maybe aliens were the one who killed Galois and they're mad he found the way to solve all formula of powers past five. Um, because maybe he did actually and they put a false result. Yeah, good theories. I like these. Just wait until you get to see my fiction books where you'll see hints of a lot of strange conspiracies that may or may not exist in the... Mm, we'll talk about that later. Now... Thank you all for joining me with your comments and stuff. In a minute, I'm going to run and grab a nut or two for the squirrel because I have to take a leak anyway. And when we come back, apart from looking at Paul Erdish, we are going to look at ways of identifying what year these maps were made. This one was in 19... It has a sticker that says June 1973, but I don't know if that's true. Uh, or if that was just when somebody bought it or something. So we're going to try and figure out when these globes are made, which one is the more modern one. I mean, this one looks more modern, but maybe not, because it also looks simpler. So, uh, and yes, uh, to whoever knows they're joking, I know you, uh, the conspiracy about aliens is a joke, I know, and feel free to leave more conspiracies about what you think aliens might be doing with mathematicians. I have fun, plenty of fun joke conspiracies of my own that will be in my fiction books. Now, here, identifying the maps, I saw some various different links of ways to do that. So while I run inside and take a leak and grab an unsalted nut for the squirrel in a moment... What I want you folks to do is either be on the lookout for the squirrels and birds while I'm gone and leave a comment with comments from random numbers you're going to want me to incorporate into the later stream. Or leave a comment if you are bored and you want to help with this to some links or names that I should look up that will speed run our process of determining what year these globes are. This is one of those times where like, I'm not really ahead of knowledge on you folks on what these globes are. We're figuring this one out together. Uh, you know, I'm a mathematician, I'm not a globologist. I don't even know what a globologist is called. Now, uh, we are gonna want to look at it because while I do a lot of math, don't think of this as a math channel. Think of this as a learning about life channel that is run by someone who's obsessed with numbers. So those are going to show up a lot, but on combo class, we are slowly and steadily going to want to understand what globes do and mean and what the flaws and what the good things are and how they've changed. That's something that, you know, over the grades, we're going to want to learn. So I figure sometimes we'll get a head start in our streams. 
Of course, the main combo class episodes are what I hope you're most excited about. The new one about aperiodic monotiles is out now. So if anyone's bored while I run inside for a minute, you can queue up for after the stream linked in the description is the new episode from a day or two ago about the new shapes that mathematicians discovered. And we have some new ones coming soon. Um, I'll give a clue that one relates to, uh, Okay, no clues. Two cool math episodes and maybe a snack break will be coming throughout the rest of June. I already gave some clues for astute viewers. And to people who know about jokes about aliens, I forgot that something I used to do in my old streams, that's something I still do on my own, so we might as well do it in the streams, is half jokingly, half genuinely, let's wave to any aliens who might be in the future watching this on a telescope. I say in the future because if they're looking at this on a telescope, it takes a while for the light to get there. So maybe in the future, aliens are watching us like a TV show. The funny thing I like to imagine is they edit the TV show way different. They probably, all the moments that I think I'm being deep, they edit in a way that I'm actually being ridiculous and silly in comedy. All the moments that I think are funny, they probably edit with some dramatic music as some learning experience. They probably keep in all the moments where I stub my toe or mess up a word. They, you know, who knows how the aliens edit the sitcom they're making about this. But just in case, let's wave to those future aliens. I love you aliens. So that's an example of a half joke conspiracy that why not be a little genuine about? Because if anything, you know, imagine what self you'd want to be in that sitcom. Maybe it can be inspirational and maybe whether or not they're watching, imagining ourselves in that alien sitcom can make ourselves be at our best behavior. Now, trust me. I'm going to do crazy enough stuff in my life that I think there's aliens. Okay, there's a we're getting into weirder hypothesis territory. I'll explain this half genuine half joke one another time in more detail, but to be really quick, maybe there are aliens out there who can backtrack where the molecules had been in the universe's configuration and it would be easy to see the past state of a universe and see where we were at that point. Well, Maybe also we're going to do crazy enough stuff over the combo class grades that the aliens are going to care about our history. So I got to run inside. I got to take a leak and grab some nuts for the squirrel. I'll be back in about three minutes. Leave a comment with either your favorite number or some links about how we should get started on identifying the proper year of these maps. Love you all.
All right, I was trying to lure Dandelion, who's pretty close over. We might get a cameo from the fluffy cat Dandelion. He's right around the corner. We'll see. Now, thank you all for sticking around while we had one of our intermissions. Uh, you know, I'm going to need to take intermissions when I do streams because I'm not one of those streamers who's just sitting there, like, watching someone else's comment or watching someone else's content going like, oh, yeah, whoa, weird. Uh, I could probably do that for like three hours. Oh, Dandelion did come. Okay. Dandy Shore, you said you're a good boy. You came because I called you. You're such a good boy. That's a Dandelion. That's a beautiful Dandelion. This cat is the most sweetheart of all time. You folks don't even know him. He's not going to flop out in the combo classroom because he knows there's all these clunky dice on the ground. But if we're indoors, he will just like flop out put his belly completely up in the air, beg for love by just like stretching so long. He has these techniques that are so good. They always get pets. People think he's the clumsy or dumber one because he's like a little clumsy, but he is a genius at getting pets, which is his main motive, which makes him smart because he achieves his goal. So, thank you, he has these techniques. He'll flop out with his belly in the air. And then if that doesn't draw your attention enough, he will do two maneuvers. He will tuck his little paws up like a rabbit like this to be like, yeah, because he knows that's cute to people. He's figured out the correlation that that gets in pets when he does his little cute move. And he also goes really long. He figured out when he stretches as long as he can go with his belly showing, just like, look how long my belly is that that gets him a lot of pets. So it's a really good technique. So it, my theory, come here Dandy line. My theory is that he's actually really smart. He's also so nice to the stray cat that came in. There's this stray, Sassafras, who we adopted more officially, like got him fixed and found, like confirmed he didn't have a home, got him fixed, started, you know, bringing him in and feeding him and stuff. This stray cat, out of many stray cats that come around, one of them would like needed a home and moved in with us. And he's become such a sweetheart and he learns from Dandelion and he hangs out with Dandelion. It's so cute. This little stray cat follows Dandelion around, sleeps right next to him, and Dandelion lets him because he's a good role model. And Dandelion is teaching him that you're allowed to flop out with your belly up and stuff. And now the stray cat's learning that from Dandelion and will sleep in my bed and let me pet his belly. So we've upgraded from Sassafras, that third cat, barely letting me touch him, to now he will let me pet his belly. So we're going to get more cat cameos. People have been liking when in the combo class episodes, which... Remember, the streams are like one long chaotic thing, but the combo class episodes, I have time to edit different scenes. I can be like, I'm, I want to say this paragraph in front of this whiteboard. I want to say this paragraph in front of the globe or whatever. And so people have been liking in grade negative two, I've been doing more cat cameos where some of the scenes are me in my front yard just petting a cat while I say the thing about math. So we're going to do that more often. We're going to have more cut scenes where I'm just like petting one of the cats while we say the line of dialogue. And there's a dandelion exploring like a good, smart, little, cool boy. He's so cute. They're curious around here because a lot of funny stuff happens back here. Don't worry. I definitely clean up the glass before the cats wander around. I know I don't invite them back here when there's fire. They're smart. These cats have a good life. To anyone who worries that there's chaos back here and the cats come back here. Do not worry. These cats are, they get spoiled. They have a good life. They get so much love. Now, we don't spoil them with food necessarily. Remember, if you have a cat, too much wet food could uh, be bad for the teeth. You might want to, oh, the stray. You know how I said the stray follows Dandelion and likes hanging out with him? There he is. That's fast and Dandelion. Look, see him? Where, where's my view of this? Oh, God dang it. Okay. Do you see them? They, they left around the corner. So that's, that's the stray I was saying. Like hanging out with Dandelion. So that's first. There they go. That's funny, boys. 
See, though, I love those little guys. And there's Sage. Sage is like the smartest, most agile one. And Sage decides when he wants to come for love. And then he's a creature who's like the most majestic creature of all time. But he decides when he wants that. These guys can sort of, you know, trick into love at any point. <laughs> now, we got three of them around. So whoever is first up in the morning, like me or my brother or whoever, is it has like three cats to deal with. It's like, whoa, all these cats, they want, they don't even care about food that much. They want pets. It's like, whoa, all these cats want love. So yeah, animals are good. We're gonna get some weird animals. Some animals I would like to get in the future include, I have a fish tank that I think is the right size as long as I get a different filter or like lack of filter thingy, a filtration system. I think I can get these cool aquatic frogs that I saw. So I mentioned that once that like aquatic frogs were something that I was thinking of putting in a fish tank because I was like, man, I've had fish before. Those are kind of boring. I don't, I don't want to take care of fish. Just the amount of work to take care of an animal and keep it happy. You need it. You're going to want a good balance for what you get from the animal. And like, with my cats, for example, I need to spend, you know, a good half hour a day added up, you know, feeding, caring for various things with the cats. But it's worth it because you get so much love. Now, with the uh, fish, if I spend like, is it even worth five minutes a day to have some fish floating around the background? Maybe if I'm not dissing fish. Fish can be cool, but you have to admit they're more boring than aquatic frogs. You got to admit that you got to admit you'd rather see these jumping around the background of a combo class video than fish swimming around. So we're going to maybe get aquatic frogs at some point. I do possibly already have the tank for them ready. Uh, I would also like to get other, you know, reptiles or amphibians are pretty chill. Not really a snake guy, but I could imagine having some combo lizards. There were those slender salamanders that were in the classroom and around my yard in a weird little flood. I still have a bonus video I filmed unearthing more slender salamanders that I still need to edit and put on this channel. There, there's actually an unedited video that will come out on here at some point about finding more slender salamanders around the classroom. But the thing is, Carlo, my main camera guy, actually took some of them to see if he could raise them. Then he asked about them at a shop uh, that specialized in that type of animal. They said they're really hard to take care for, to take care of and make happy in like a human indoor environment. So he ended up letting them free. So Carlo let them free at a nice park that was a lot nicer for them than the yard they were in. I mean, you know, they were in the combo class. So that's not the right zone for a slender salamander necessarily. Right zone for us to have one, but for them. So they got set free in a park, but they were hard to take care for. Amphibians are often hard to take care for, but I think we could do frogs. Now... Other animals would be fun too. I do like dogs. I'm kind of a cat guy, but I would get a nice big dog if I had a combo big, you know, property someday with a big yard or like meadow or something where I could run around with the dog. I don't want to have to take a dog for a walk in the city every day. And you got to take a dog on a walk every day if you want to keep it happy. So maybe someday if we're living out in the woods with a big meadow, we'll get a dog too, where we can just like run around with the dog, keep it happy while we're doing our own stuff. Now, animals like this are cool. I've had fish in the past and we get a lot of cool animal visitors in the combo classroom. There was a skunk that came recently. I think I put that clip maybe just on the Patreon. I'm trying to figure out where to put the skunk clip where that will fit in a video. And there is, we get possums, we get, raccoons we get a lot of wild stuff around here we're gonna do a camping thing here again we don't have too much room for a tent i might have to buy a smaller tent when i have enough money so that might be something i put in the combo class budget uh for the future is like a small enough tent that we can camp in the classroom uh while the desk is here but when we did camping streams earlier that was because the old desk was broken and we didn't have the new desk yet so there's more room now 
Uh, to anyone who does want to support the combo mission, I'll note really quick that it does really help the people who support me on Patreon. They're really awesome. Their names are in the description of this video. So feel free to check that out if, you know, for some reason you have a budget and you like combo class. Now, somebody said baby skunks are cute, and the skunks are always cool looking. You know, I'm not going to say they don't look cool, but the thing about the skunks is they go on the porch. We used to put uh, the dry cat food on the porch. So we used to let the cats eat indoor or outdoor. We'd have bowl indoor, bowl outdoor. They don't overeat. We just give them like this good natural dry food and then occasionally a treat of wet food or other stuff, but usually just normal dry food. They don't overeat. They're not fat or anything, the cats. Like dandelion, the vet said, is perfect weight. And so we used to put bowls outside too. The cats can still go in or out. But now we only put bulls indoors for food because raccoons and skunks and stuff would come way more often when we had bowls of cat food on the porch. And when skunks would come there, I remember one time I was throwing a party and I invited a bunch of people over and I was out here and I came back to the house and there's a skunk on the porch. And I'm like, what do I do? And I had to go through a side way to get back into my house because you can't like scare the skunk away or you're worried it's going to spray you and if you just wait it was just sitting there eating the cat food i'm like how what do i do there's a skunk there it's like blocking the door it's like right literally in front of the where i need a step to get the knob so i can't try and spook it away it'll spray me i can't wait it's just gonna stay eating so because like a raccoon they're hard to scare away those things are those things are assholes but you can, like, if you're loud and big enough and screaming and clapping, the raccoon will run away. But a skunk, I don't want to do that to because it, what if it sprays me? So I remember, like, having a party and having to text a bunch of people and be like, warning, when you come in the door, there might be a skunk on the porch. So... <laughs> Yeah, skunks are not my favorite. They actually lived under a thing in our yard for a while, and we had to look up how to get rid of them. And the humane way is you soak little balls of, like, cotton or something in a type of smell they really hate of some sort of cleaning fluid or whatever, and they hate the smell of it. So you leave these balls soaked in it under there, and they leave. So... Somebody asked how you click on someone's name to reply. I don't know. I, you might have to just write at in it. I haven't seen how to reply either. So I don't know. Um, also, to anyone who watches in the future, remember that the chat takes like half a day to process. So hopefully the stream still makes sense. I should be a little more clear when I'm saying a comment said this because it's probably a little incoherent the first 12 hours of the stream being uploaded when they only have the SD version on YouTube and don't have HD or chat up yet. And so when the stream ends, because I like make it go straight to being a vi video on the live tab that people could watch later. And so, yeah, it's annoying they do that. They have a little gap in that too. I should be extra careful of trying to make it still make sense. Like I have said in a previous stream, I'll warn people again. I was thinking of trying experimenting with streaming on other platforms, probably Twitch, which is another main one. Not because I want to get a bunch of viewers from streaming. My main goal is making long videos. My favorite thing to make are my horizontal combo class episodes and bonus videos on here and stuff like that. And sometimes I just want to be a little less censored with like... I'm probably going to swear a little bit more over there because it's not on my main educational channel and use other people's things as references more without, I mean, obviously I'll credit people, but not worry about the copyright automatic system on YouTube getting mad at my channels because they have an automatic thing that will get like automatically mad at your channel. If you use, you know, more than a few seconds of audio from somebody else's video. And sometimes I would like to reference stuff with credit and stuff but it, I don't want to worry about that on one of my channels here. So 
I might do some streams going forward. I'll warn people here first on other platforms, but I'll probably per stream plan on cutting out the best main topic and putting it as a bonus video here. Like I relate to people who wouldn't go to another platform to watch stuff. I'm a big YouTube viewer and rarely go to platforms other than YouTube myself. So like when I'm watching stuff, so I understand if people don't want to go over there, uh, I'll probably try and for any stream I do over there, whatever main topic there is, cut that out and make it a YouTube video on here as like a bonus video. Warning that could be happening, making some of the streams turn into cut down bonus videos that are from a stream on another channel. I'll warn people about that. And if you want to be extra warned, you can always be on the Discord, which is linked in the description where I try and make sure to give extra updates and such. Now, a lot of comments about the map as well and about projections you'd have to do and stuff like that. So why don't we try and look up real quick how to determine date of globe. And I want to make sure that this thing was either built in June 1973 or if it was actually built earlier and that was when someone bought it or something. So, here we have one list that shows a new name and a former name and a date it changed. For example, I didn't even know this. The Czech Republic is now called Czechia or something. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, Czechia. And then there's other ones we can find, like here we have Samoa and Tokelau uh, were named the same thing. Why is that one on here? Oh, it was moved. The location was moved on that one. So some of them, the location might be moved. Some of them, the location might be the same, but the name was changed. Now it's probably way older than these. Let's see what they call the Czech Republic. Where, okay, where's the Czech Republic? I'm not good at that. One of my favorite filmmakers is from the Czech Republic though. This guy might be my favorite filmmaker of all time, Jan Svankmeyer. I love this guy. Watch this guy's interpretation of Alice in Wonderland and his movie about parents raising this weird animal and watch mostly all of his shorts are really good. All these shorter films he's done. Not all these are that one is, but watch it. These one other ones are actually his longer films, but watch these short. They're really surreal and cool. All these ones. Whoa. Those are cool and weird. I love these things. So that's the type of thing that I want to like make a reference to and show people, but a copyright could get mad from some company, not from him. He wouldn't care. But, uh, so, you know, maybe I'll show that on another platform or something, but where is the Czech Republic? Um, I'm spelling it wrong too. Now we're going to see what they call it. Cause this thing's changed names a lot. So it should be up here, up in this zone. Now, let's see, it should be right around here. Is that it? Yeah. So it's hard, they have Czechoslovakia is over here on this map. So let's see when it was called Czechoslovakia. So, this was changed to Czech Republic in 93. So, so far that just confirms it's before 93. I thought that was likely because something on here says June, 1973. I'm thinking that could be when someone labeled this one, which that map does not have a label. We'll have to figure that from scratch, but at least that demonstrates the fact it calls it Czechoslovakia and not Czech Republic that it is pre or 1993 or earlier. So were there other changes of things we can note earlier? Let's look at the date that they mentioned on this map. They said that it was about June, 1973. So the Bahama islands or the Bahamas without having this little islands abbreviation. So where are those? Uh, we're going to have to look those up. 
I'm not good with maps, folks. Sorry, I, I didn't like geography ever, even though it's could be very interesting because it's like where stuff exists in our planet. Too many names. So I never liked geography as much as math. So pardon me if I have to look up where each of these locations is before we jump there. Now, I've also never had the funds to travel anywhere. Like I, you know, I can't afford to like travel a million places. I've been, uh, I live here. I live right there or so. Yep, in that little nook. So that bay, the Bay Area is in that nook. So you see that little nook? I'm on the right side of that. Somewhere in that zone. Now, and that's why it's called the Bay Area. That little, the water part in there is the bay. So the bay I talk about, when I say we're going to the marina, it's one of these coasts. When I say we're doing a field trip to the marina, it's somewhere on this part of the blue line. Now, there's that. I've only traveled a few places in the U.S. only in this zone and to Mexico a few times and to Hawaii once when I was younger. So I've only been in like this little part of the world. I'd love to travel more, but, you know, I don't have money for that yet. Maybe someday. Now, over here we got our islands and... Those were the Bahamas or the Bahama Islands. So we're seeing which one of those it was labeled as. Now, where exactly is that? That's next to North America, this little weird thing here. I'm seeing Bermuda Islands. I'm see, uh, I guess you folks can't even see this clear enough. Uh, I might have to zoom in on here. Help me find the Bahama Islands or whatever. Now, uh-oh, what have I done? Okay. Now, should be somewhere around here. Now, I only see Bermuda Islands. Was that possibly what it used to be called? or is, Oh, no, Bahama here. They say Bahama right there. This is neither. Oh, Bahama Islands. It's separated a bit how they wrote it. They wrote it spread out. Bahama Islands. I don't know if you can even see that. It's right there. Bahama Islands. Now, that tells us that it is 1973 or earlier. So, now we can see if India, what does PT mean there? Uh, what does that PT mean? <laughs> um, India, that, something. Uh, I need to show the screen. Uh, this is why I need someone else to run the tech on my live streams. I'm going to get Carlo, to, my main camera guy, to try and run the tech on these sometimes. He's not necessarily like better at it than me, but uh, having someone who's not me do it will make me be able to focus on just the fun talking parts. Now, here we have India with whatever this PT means is Banglet, became Bangladesh. So wait, what happened with Bangladesh on here? Is that the only one, the only Bangladesh? Okay. Now, so part of India became Bangladesh in 1972. So, where is that? It is here. So, in that part of India, it got named to Bangladesh in 1972. So I guess that means this is a harder one to find. You know how if it's sort of like when you prove something by contradiction, you can find just one counterexample, but it's hard to prove that everything or nothing exists of something. Sometimes when you're trying to prove something, one end of it, like the all or the nothing, is really hard to prove, and the other end would just require one counterexample. 
this is one of those things where the last one just required us to see the word islands after Bermuda. Now we have to confirm that nothing here says Bangladesh. We have to look through every part of Lower India to see if any parts of it say Bangladesh on this map. Now, let me take a quick look and see if I can spot one or not. I see Bangalore. That's probably different. I don't really, I'm, I'm sure I'm pronouncing all these wrong. Sorry if I am. I don't see Bangladesh on there. So I think that does confirm not seeing Bangladesh on here that it is after 1972, meaning that 1973 should be about right for this map. Which leads us to the next question, which is, how many things aren't current on this map? Well, everything on this list since this, everything above this point changed since the map. So this map, um, it looks like, you know, they didn't have Papua New Guinea written right. Uh, they didn't have Vietnam written right. I mean, not right, there's no right way, but written how you'd want it if you were trying to reference it in a modern way. It, there's no right or wrong. It's all, you know, humans labeling stuff. Also, it gets kind of weird and racist when you get into the history of what stuff is big on the map and what stuff gets extra names and all this stuff. So, you know, uh, let's make sure to acknowledge that all the places we're talking about are equally cool and just got random names based on some weird history, some of which are weird. And when we say what is like, right, if that is how I phrase it, what I mean is what is current. I don't mean that that is better in any way. What's current now, we have a lot of changes in Yugoslavia here. So a lot of Yugoslavian things here. Now, someday it would be cool to visit some of the places that I have genetics from. I have all sorts of European genetics mostly of like German, French, Ukrainian, Russian, Polish. So never been to any of those places, but not my grandparent level, but like my great grandparents were from those places. Although my grandpa on my dad's side was from Germany and escaped the Holocaust when he was younger than I am now. Now, a lot of changes here. The Democratic Republic of Congo that came around here or moved in 1997. Samoa lost the western part here or moved or something. Little hard to read exactly what they're saying here, but it's interesting how many changes occurred since then. Now, with this other map that didn't have a date on it, it might be harder because it seems like this one has less names on it. This is like a less detailed map. So I wonder if it would be missing things anyway. But it's probably a lot newer in any case. And let's check if that's the case by looking at the latest one that this one had off, which was the Bahama Islands, as opposed to not mentioning islands and just calling it the Bahamas. Now, okay, sorry, I suck at geography. We're looking up again where the Bahamas are. Now, when you study a lot about one thing, that doesn't necessarily make you good at other things. There are aspects of life I am far behind on because I've gotten like really good at like math and certain types of music and certain types of writing and certain types of science. And that leaves a lot of other stuff unlearned. <laughs> so here we have to the lower right, right there. Uh, what? was called the Bahama Islands and then is just called the Bahamas. Now, let's see if they even mention that though. They mentioned Bermuda Island. Oh, Bahamas. Yeah, oh, yeah, so they just call it Bahamas. So this map, this globe is newer than this globe. Now, of course, there could be some manufacturing thing where like one company made it the old way or whatever. We're assuming that the globe was made up to what the current world model was. So, 
you know, maybe this wasn't built in that year, but was using that year's model, whatever. The model on this globe is 1973. This one is sometime since then. Now, before we go deeper into that, let me look into our comments for a minute. Uh, you guys want to go to the Bermuda Triangle sometime for a field trip? That'd be sick. Because I keep seeing Bermudas on here. You hear about the Bermuda Triangle? It has all these like myths about it that when I was a kid, this was like really mysterious and cool to me because it was one of these things that was talked about, about like ships disappeared around here a lot. And of course I thought it's probably somewhat pseudoscience and somewhat over dramatized, but which it entirely is. I mean, as a kid, I thought it was at least somewhat. And as you look more into it, it is. Uh, the ships did not disappear for weird ways. So, however, still kind of neat to look at that type of... Mi I like the lore of it. You know, whether or not ships actually disappeared, it's like a good plot for a story. This thing called a triangle in the ocean where ships do weird stuff. Now... Maybe we should go to the Bermuda Triangle someday. Now, somebody says I should take a commercial break rather that I'm, <laughs> when I take a break, they're like, okay, the comments, they say, I should say, let's take a commercial break instead of I'm going to take a piss or something like that. So I'm too real. I just say like I'm getting some water and some stuff, but I often call it the intermission. So maybe I should leave out the details of the fact that I'm going to take a leak some of the times. And maybe I should just say it's intermission time. I did want to introduce a way for myself to casually do intermissions that I forgot to implement further, but I might re-implement sometime, which is the last five minutes of each hour are the intermission time. We get 55 minutes on, five minutes off alternating. Uh, I've been forgetting to do that, but whatever. Now, I also forgot that when I brought back nuts on the last intermission, I didn't put them somewhere cool for the squirrel yet. So we need to put some nuts up here so that if the squirrels want to come, they got some cool stuff to find. I didn't have their favorites. I think they're like almonds, but their favorites are like pecans and walnuts. Now, a lot of cool comments about the old things I was talking about a while ago, because I haven't checked the comments for a minute. Uh, but I appreciate you all and love you all. Now, somebody says, could you use things like what's called a sextant, uh, which calculates distances on the ocean? And yes, YouTube, don't get mad. Sextant is a normal word. I'm not the one who invented it. Same with some people call basic seximal. Some words just have that in it. Mathematicians are a little goofy and they called primes that are six apart sexy primes because they were allowed to by the word root. Gotta love it when the word root lets you get away with the gag. Like, uh, you know, if I ever need to uh, say a very mild swear word, but uh, I'm not even allowed to do that, I can mention that we're in combo class. So sometimes you get a swear word just in your thing. For those who know the combo lore, there was an actual YouTube glitch that was editing my links that I was posting to just saying the last three letters and saying at ass. Look back in the lore. It's on live streams and I made a short about it and you've, I've shown it live. Of There's YouTube, it's probably still, okay. I need to know real quick. I need to test this. Is YouTube still doing this to me? Okay. I'm going to try and copy a link somewhere and see if it does it. I don't know if it's necessarily going to do it or not, but it did this insane thing to me. I'm, I have to try this again. If you want to see it, what it did is when I would say, check out my other channel here. Here's the link, youtube.com slash combo class. It would change the thing into an at because it was trying to like adapt handles. And when it would change it into an at, I wasn't allowed to have a handle yet, I guess. The handle is the at thing you have. Now it's at combo class or whatever. But when they were adapting the process at least... They were, okay, they might have fixed it. It might just be doing the links now. Okay, I think it, I'm not seeing any weirdness right now. 
Maybe the glitch is gone, but that was a moment in history in grade negative one. Uh, you can see it for real. It is genuine, 100%. And they were editing the links to say, check out my other channel, uh, at ass. And just taking an at, and the, the reason was because it's the last three letters of my show name, I guess. Absolutely ridiculous. So there's still probably comments out from me that I didn't catch. There's probably comments on my videos from me that I didn't notice the glitch yet that say, hey, check out my other main channel here, at ass. YouTube. Okay, no, I love you, YouTube. So the glitch appears to be gone. <laughs> so, sorry, I just had to test that real quick. Now, a lot of other great comments. I appreciate you all. And we're going to calculate this other map. And somebody says they purposefully avoid occult satanic slash ghost stuff because that's for people who don't know better. I think that those terms are subjective and that if you try and avoid any type of knowledge, you're going to come out for the worse. So I would say that, you know, everyone will define those terms differently. And if you avoid how you define those terms, you're going to lose some knowledge or some thoughts. Now, you know, you don't have to, you can have time and choices in your stuff, but I personally don't mind at all if something lines up with what someone says is a cult or satanic or whatever. If I don't talk about 666, then you folks are going to know less about triangular numbers. If I don't talk about 13, which is unlucky in some places around here, you folks are going to know less about prime numbers. And so it's like, I'm not going to avoid everything that looks mildly satanic because otherwise we're going to miss some learning. Now, in fact, I'll admit, I'll even as a joke sometimes play up a little satanicness. I'm sorry. I think that satanicness is not like the source of evil. And if I'm going to use it, I will be joking or even loving toward it because I don't think that like uh, some spooky candle in the number 666 or whatever. I don't know. Leave a comment what you think uh, is occult or satanic. Uh, is necessarily the source of evil in the world. The source of evil might be people like that Unabomber who thought he was on a good cause and sent a bunch of bombs to people. Now, people are saying about the shape of the universe. We don't actually know the shape of the universe, and I will do episodes at some point about what if the universe is the surface of a 4D hypersphere? What if it's a 4D torus? Stuff like that. So we're going to jump into different shapes the universe could be someday. Right now we're looking at the globe, which these are obviously rounded versions because the globe is, I mean, the earth, the actual earth is a dodecahedron. For those who don't know dodecahedrons, those are the 12-sided ones. Let me see, what what's a dodecahedron? So now the thing is there is called something called the icosahedral conjecture that some scientists think the earth is actually an icosahedron, the 20 sided dice like shape as opposed to the 12 sided one. So I guess it's technically unknown if the earth has 12 sides or 20 sides. No, okay. I'm completely joking. If that wasn't clear to anyone, uh, the earth is close to round. The earth is called an oblate spheroid. Now, um, somebody noted, how can they lose knowledge? I don't mean that you will lose knowledge you had. I mean, you will lose out on potential knowledge if you block out things that you think, I don't know. People are allowed to think stuff is offensive to their beliefs. I wouldn't, you know, pay too much attention to something that was too sexist or racist or whatever. If you want to include stuff that is a cult in that, or satanic or whatever. I suppose you can feel free, but I feel, in my opinion, it ends up uh, either implying or providing some closed-mindedness. Sorry if that comes across as an insult to a particular person. Don't I love sharing thoughts if this isn't directed toward just a person. I like using the comments as jumping off points. But to the person who noted that, leave a comment of a few things you think are a cult that you think would be 
uh, improper or bad for me to incorporate in a video? Because I'm just curious what you mean. Like, do you mean the number 666? Uh, that one came up once. Or do you mean, what do you mean by occult or satanic? Because if you mean something like murder, then yeah, sure, that's bad. Murder is bad. If you mean, you know, robbing somebody who has less resources than you, yeah, that's bad. So, you know, maybe we'll agree on it, but I'm curious. What do you mean by occult or satanic? Because some people mean like acting spooky with candles or something. It's like, really? That's the, the, uh, the worst thing in the world is if I act spooky with some candles? So I'm just curious uh, to anyone who doesn't like occult or satanic stuff, please specify. I'm sorry if it comes across as roasting. This is also how I talk with my friends, just so anyone knows if I roast any comments. Me and my friends are very playful and we roast each other. And that's, in my opinion, good to give people thick skin a little bit. So I'm not going to, you know, be mean to someone, but I think people, you know, can joke about each other and slightly, you know, joking ways. So... Sorry if any of my reactions to comments come across like I'm roasting people. That is also how I talk with my friends. Now, um, somebody's saying commerce is good, but totally unregulated modern capitalism is bad. Uh, I'm not sure which of my thoughts that was a reaction to, but... I don't want to get too political when not needed on this channel. I'll only get political when necessary or occasionally if I think it'll be helpful to share my thoughts on that. I will say that the world is not as black and white as some people make it, that there is a capitalism versus something called socialism or communism. Uh, the world is not even a single spectrum of that. It's a whole, you know, multi-dimensional spectrum of many things. So... It's when you say there should be less capitalism, some people think you mean there. He's saying there should be no capitalism. He's saying it should be pure communism, but everything is like a multi-dimensional spectrum there. And I do think there should be less capitalism. I think that corporations are ripping you off daily and that if we worked together to have a better democracy that would require more trust in government and less trust in corporations, then perhaps there could be a government built that, or improved upon the current system, that I don't think, um, I think that we shouldn't trust corporations as much and that they are given too much free reign to rip off everybody in the world and to burn down forests and stuff. And so, yeah, I see what the person was reacting. It was a reaction to me saying that taking from someone with less than you. I personally meant that I was going to say robbing is bad when I wanted to give an example of something I found, like satanic or whatever, something I found immoral, I guess. But then I realized, you know, maybe there's a circumstance someone would steal food to survive or something. So my example was robbing from somebody with less resources than you is easier to categorize as always, in quotes, meaning almost always immoral. Now, uh, I wasn't referring to, capital, uh, to capitalism, but it does apply. Capitalism is rich people taking money from less people. When combo class gets some enemies in the world, trust me, it's probably not going to be like, uh, well, I don't know who it's not going to be, but if combo class gets some enemies in the world, it'll probably be people who own a big corporation who are ripping off the environment and or humans. And some of the more evil people in the world are the people who are really rich, who own certain companies. So somebody says they don't trust the government either. Yeah, the government's not perfect, but it's better to trust them than corporations. And we don't want an entirely anarchy based society. So we're going to need to have some work in government. It's not perfect, but I will say I recommend voting and I recommend that you know, the government is more trustworthy than corporations. Now, you do still have to use them. I still buy stuff from Amazon sometimes. You can't avoid it. But, you know, maybe we can find ways to minimize it. Um, 
I'm not even saying you should cut back on a particular thing in your daily life. I'm just saying we should be aware that on the big scale changes that should happen with the planet, as much as the government needs to change, even more so the way that corporations sneak into that system needs to change. Now, if we ever get a bunch of money around combo class for some reason, first, we're just going to make sure that I have a good assembled team to film content every day of the week so that you guys can have awesome videos that we can do more than the amount I can edit. Um, once I have more editors and camera people, that's the first thing. If we ever get money, we'll go toward the next thing will possibly be to buy some cool property somewhere to have a real outdoor set where we can do whatever experiments we want, make whatever noise we want somewhere in the woods that we own. And maybe we'll build a little castle there out of wood. And the final thing is if we've already done those things, we'll give the rest of the money to charity because I don't need more money than that. I don't need a fancy car or whatever. So, you know, if we can build a little combo castle in the woods and I have a team to film me every day, I'm good on money and the rest of it will go to charity. Now, of course, then you got to look up which charity is it worth supporting. Whole nother story. Uh, we will create educational charities, perhaps. Or the other thing, you know, we really got to work on with these globes here. It's a reminder, environmentalism, folks, is really, really important. That is part of why the corporations are bad is because they pollute the most is environmentalism and because they cut down the most forests. Environmentalism is really important. They're, we're making so many types of animal extinct by what we're doing with the planet. And so... Let's please try and be aware that if there's like any changes that the next generation can make going forward, uh, can we please treat the environment a little better? All right. Uh, somebody asked if I believe if Satan exists or if God exists. I probably don't believe in the God you're referring to. I believe there's a beautiful fabric of the universe that I don't think we will ever know exactly what it is in our lifetimes. So I am, I guess, what you would call agnostic, where I would once consider myself, honestly, I was what I would consider an atheist for a time, where I didn't believe in any of the particular gods presented to me. I do relate to certain Eastern religion philosophies about certain meditative ways of viewing life, and... There is a beautiful natural fabric of life that we may never know in our lifetimes. So it's okay to have hypotheses and questions. I think there is something magnificent out there that I don't think I would, I don't think it's the God that this person is referring to. I don't believe the things in the Bible happened in the real world. You know, I mean, a few of them did, but yeah, I don't believe that women were created from a guy's rib. So I don't believe a lot of that Bible stuff. Now, I do also think that while we're getting a little, you know, political-ish, I think that if you're really religious, be careful not like forcing it down other people's throats because it's not going to help them convert to your religion. <laughs> Write a cool paper about how the religion's awesome, but I don't know who exactly this is. I forget who it was, but some people... For example, on my 666 video recently, replied to every comment saying a Bible quote. That's not helping people get into your religion. I'm sorry. It's, it it's feels like spam or junk mail. It's not the way to promote something. So if you want to promote your religion, like make a cool work of art or book or something. And then once in a while, tell people, hey, check out this book when you're ready. And then maybe you'll convince people. But spam posting Bible quotes is not going to help anything, especially because I don't think you want people to spam post the other Bible quotes at you that are like the really bad Bible quotes that endorse murder and slavery and stuff. So I think that there's a lot of problems with like, I don't see why churches don't have to pay taxes. Always churches get some tax loopholes. Ridiculous. If there's a tax system, everyone should pay it. And hopefully the rich people, including the churches, should pay the taxes more or all compared to the poor people. There's enough rich people money that we don't need to tax people who make less than 50,000 a year, even 100,000. Just take, 
10% from the really rich people, which includes churches. So there is a lot of problems with the way that Christianity and even other religions like Judaism uh, come about in the modern society. Now, I had a bar mitzvah. I was raised mildly Jewish. My parents didn't really believe super in the religious stuff, but I still sometimes, as a traditional holiday, with my family when I happened to be with like my mom, dad, and brother all together on a Friday night, when that happens, we will light a candle and sing a little prayer for what's called Shabbat, or the Sabbath for Jewish people, which falls on Friday night through Saturday day. And when that falls, the Jewish Sabbath or Shabbat, uh, once in a while, me and my family will light a candle and stuff, but it's not religious, it's more traditional. But I had a bar mitzvah. I read the Torah, I had to recite part of it, I had to write part of it, all that stuff. The bar mitzvah helps some people because it forces them for the first time to analyze a big chunk of weird text and write about it or speak about it. I already did that. I liked analyzing big chunks of text and speaking about them. So I didn't get that much out of the bar mitzvah. But it might help some people because, you know, maybe it's their first time having to do that. So, now, for people... Um, I'm sorry to the person who is devastated. I'm not sure why it devastates you that I don't believe in your particular God, because I feel like if you let loose your idea of what names you give things, and unless you're really addicted to the history and you think that Earth is less than billions of years old, that we're not going to be able to agree. If you think Earth is less than a billion years old, I mean, or that the universe is. Maybe Earth is less than that. How old is Earth? According to this, yeah, a billion. So um, Earth's about four and a half billion years old. So if you think Earth is less than one billion years old, uh, we're not going to be able to have a fair, reasonable debate. I just think you're in a different fantasy land. If you just believe the fables and uh, analogies of the Bible then if you let loose the names, we probably believe the same stuff. So there's probably no reason to get offended. We probably both believe you should be nice to people. I believe that a lot of the stuff Jesus is quoted as saying, whether or not he was a real person, I don't know, but a lot of the stuff he was quoted as saying is beautiful. I believe that you should love your neighbor and your enemy. I think stuff like that. I think that the quotes attributed to Jesus in the Bible included some very beautiful stuff. So, you know, I don't agree with the parts where it's like, and then God endorsed that this tribe, like, literally, like, you know, trigger warning for people of hard words, but it endorses rape, murder, slavery, all that stuff. So it's, um, if that's not the stuff you believe and you believe the love thy enemy and stuff, then yeah. Um, I am on the same page as you. If you believe, what do you believe? Do you believe in na uh, nature is important and learning is important and you should be nice to people and you should help out your community? Yeah, we're on the same page. You just assigned a different name to it. But if you think that it's less than a billion years old, no. Fantasyland. Okay. A bar mitzvah to someone who asked is a Jewish tradition where there's also a version called a bat mitzvah for girls and a bar mitzvah is for boys typically. A Jewish tradition when somebody comes 13, they 13 years old, they as soon as they're 11 or 12 they start practicing for this and they study part of the Torah which is directly connected to the Bible. And what's the chunk of it that's which? So yeah, the Torah is the first five books of the Bible. So out of the beginning of the Bible, the Jewish people believe that same thing. It was from a melded tradition. And so you study uh, one of these chapters that lines up with your birthday or lines up with the day you're going to present your passage, and which is near your 13th birthday. So it's like you pick a date near your 13th birthday when you're going to throw this weird religious party that you invite your friends to and family 
and all your extended relatives and you study one of these passages that lines up with what the synagogue which is like a jewish church would be doing that day and so then you present by reading some of it in song and i still have burned in my memory how mine starts and then it goes on from there and i forget and if anybody is christian and says oh he's believing something else you are so uneducated because that is also part of the torah I mean, the Torah is part of the Bible. So what I just sung is part of the Bible, too. So <laughs> to people who are like, oh, this is a huge divide. He believes Jewish. He doesn't believe Christian. It's, they're literally share books. Now, <laughs> you study one of those, you present it, and then you give like a little speech about your interpretation of it. And the hard part is you have to read it out of the big Torah, the actual Torah that looks like this thing. It looks like this. They wheel it out. Here, look. Looks like this thing. They wheel out and they. Um, you got to read it from the Hebrew text and sing it with this right cadence. And you got to like read like a bunch of it. And so. It's kind of annoying to study for. Nobody likes it when they're a 12 year old Jewish boy, but. Uh, some people might, like I said, some people probably get something out of it by it being their first time they've had to analyze in depth, a strange text and give a presentation about it. I already like doing that stuff and even did at the time. So I don't think I got anything from it and I don't know Hebrew anymore. I only remember a few letters. They only train you to learn how to read the letters and the sounds. You don't really know the translations of more than like 200 words, and then you forget those 200 words. So it doesn't actually teach you Hebrew unless you go through like a much deeper process. You forget everything except for your first like line maybe might be embedded in your skull forever. Luckily, the synagogue my family did it at sort of promoted dancing and singing and had a somewhat singy dancy nature. And oh, whoa. So the guy who was very disappointed, I didn't believe in uh, what I assume is the Christian God said he doesn't worship nature. So we're not going to agree. Yeah. If that's even a harder path. So when I said, if you, if you think the earth's 7,000 years old, then at that point I was like, okay, we can agree to disagree, but you don't worship nature. I don't know about that boy. So I will, I would be, if you actually believe that stuff, I would be happy to interview you. I want to find a way for people to call in. I want to talk to somebody who actually believes the Earth's 7,000 years old. Because that's just, honestly, I'm sorry. But that is like believing that, like, you don't believe that a certain, like, if I say that the 12th Fibonacci number is 144, that you're like, no, I don't believe it. It's not. 12th Fibonacci number should be 7. So it's literally like something that doesn't require that intense amount of geographic calculations or data to know that, I mean, it's hard to know it's four and a half million billion years old, but it's not six or 7,000 years old. If you really believe that stuff also, make sure you've read the whole Bible because if you haven't, then I don't know why you're, you know, preaching that it's the truth. And if you have, like, actually answer it. Do you believe and agree with the parts that are very obviously endorsing, sorry, like a trigger warning for the words, rape, murder, and slavery? So they're like highly endorsed. They're like recommended in certain circumstances by the Bible. It's just disgusting. So... I do worship nature, just so everyone knows. When I say nature, I include humans as a weird part of nature. What humans built is almost in a way, you know, on the sidelines of nature. That's a little past what I'd call nature, something we built like a globe. But a human's nature, plants and animals are nature. In a way, these wood walls are nature because they're built from a tree once. And uh, that's like what's around us. So I've got to worship what's around us, what is obviously here. What do I know about the world? I know cool stuff grows, and I know one plus one should be two in certain systems. So 
you know, the things that I can actually feel like plants or see or stuff, I'm going to find beautiful. And I do love nature. We're going to do more videos in nature. I don't think I'll be able to stream out there. So we're going to have to do like bonus videos where I just do like a little bonus math lesson or even philosophy lesson or whatever out by a stream. Cause we can't, I'm not going to have service to stream it. We're going to have to pre-film it, but I'm going to do that more because I couldn't get out into nature this past year that much because I had two intense surgeries last year. So this year I nature brought me back to life and now I am part of nature again and we're going to go on more hikes and stuff, but it can't always be on the stream or the thing will die. So now Somebody is saying that the gross, scary parts of the Bible show the like bad parts of humanity and it just shows that people aren't good. Well, the God in that Bible endorses them and recommends them and tells certain people to do them and tell, uh, rewards people for doing them. So you got to look at if you like, I feel like the people recommending it haven't read the Bible, like it actually read more of it. So God is recommending all of the things that I was saying in different parts of the Bible. They're saying the people get rewarded, the people get praised for doing those things, the people sometimes are even given a message from God to do those things. So read the actual text that you're telling everybody is like beautiful. <laughs> now, I'm sorry, it's I don't want to get like anti-religious because I do believe like I'm happy to interview anyone of any religion. I my friend some of my friends have different religions. Uh, you know, I had one of my coworkers at my old job believed the earth was 7000 years old. I still got along with him. We would debate and be very different opinioned, but we still got along. We were still, you know, almost what I would call friends. And so <laughs> so it says, they read the Bible. God doesn't recommend most of those things. Okay, so God only recommends some of rape, murder, or slavery. Cool, great God you got there. Now, I'm sorry. I don't want to get anti-religion because people who believe in the morals of Jesus and some of those teachings he said, awesome. Some of those things are beautiful. There are certain passages from it that are awesome. Now, somebody asked how my legs are healing, and they are pretty good. I wasn't able to walk around. And okay, I'm sorry if that was felt targeted to whoever was leaving comments toward it. Like I said, I roast my friends and stuff. I'm, I'm very opinionated. I'm very honest. So I'm going to leave my honest opinions, and I might disagree with you folks sometimes. But don't treat that as like you're my enemy or whatever. Uh, you know, I, I can disagree with my friends too. But my legs are doing good. I can walk around and they still need more checkups. I'm going to have to go back to the doctor to get more x-rays. I have problems with my body. I had a really dark period of life that damaged my body and I almost died like two and a half years ago. That was before the surgeries related to the cause of why I needed the surgeries. But when I was hospitalized from almost dying, that wasn't the surgeries. That was a year before. And... Um... So they're healing really good, but there are a lot of parts of my body that are still going to need more x-rays, more physical therapy, more stuff like that. And I do have some conditions for a young age. You know, I wanted to go into various conditions at some point to try and normalize stuff like that, that people can be hurt and still do cool stuff in the world. But I'm turning 30 very soon, some point in the next couple weeks which is on the younger end for any of these conditions I have. I have mild osteoporosis, which is weak bones. So if I like snap something weird in the classroom, I'm more fragile actually. And I have arthritis. So my body hurts sometimes. Like when I'm filming stuff or before or after or during or stuff, I can't help it. My body hurts. Um, I've even been on painkillers from the doctors for various reasons over the years when I had like serious conditions of pain related to the hips and breaking bones and stuff like that. Now I don't take painkillers cause you can't really be on those like daily and be that functional unless you really need to, but I'm in pain sometimes. So my, my body is, uh, 
gonna give me a harder time than average. I have to work with it. I have a better brain than usual and a worse body than usual right now. So that's what I have to work with. But it's better than some people. I am able to walk around and I'm able to start taking hikes again. So I would treat the surgeries as a major success. So thank you for asking. Someone said drink more milk. Don't worry, I take calcium pills I t- and vitamin D are the two good ones for bones mostly. And there's other ones, but I take calcium and vitamin D every day. I also take medication. I have mental problems too. People, we haven't even gotten into that that much. We're going to have to normalize that stuff more because everything, everyone puts things black and white and people probably assume that I like, is this a thing that he does do or doesn't do? Well, you know, there have been times I've like been on medication or there have been conditions that I've been diagnosed with, but then the next doctor wasn't sure about, or things are much more of spectrums than people realize. So we'll try and normalize that over time. Somebody said um, various stuff about other stuff. We're not going to talk about uh, drugs right now. Now, I feel like me and Stick are at least relating on a lot of this stuff. And uh, Stick is uh, not only one of my uh, cool mods who helps me with stuff, but also sent this that I actually found a way to work in to either the next episode or the one after one of the next one of the two episodes i'm currently filming i'm not positive the order they'll come out but this is probably the first of the two is uses modular arithmetic and so usually i have to just be like imagine a, a weekday this time we can actually do it it does turn very slow because it's built to actually like go if it's plugged in through the days which we might try sometime maybe i'll plug it in for a week Uh, But it goes too slow for me to spin it during a take necessarily, but it's still a really cool visual prop. And I might plug it in for a week or two just to see if it still goes. If it doesn't, then we're going to have to think about what day to keep it on. What day does it always feel like in combo class? I guess part of me wants it to be Saturday because Saturday is like assumed to be the fun day. So we want a Saturday vibe. But part of me wants it to be Monday because I want to, in convo class, embrace the idea that Mondays don't have to be bad. We don't have to be Garfields or whatever. And now, I guess I feel a little more free with that because I've picked my own schedule for a while before my somewhat job was combo class. My job was private music lessons I taught and I got to pick like when I offered them. So... I could make my Mondays light, but still, maybe we can find a way to like Mondays. I'm putting it to the um, middle of Saturday for now. I think that's a good mood for it for now. Now, I've gotten quite distracted by the comments from our uh, chat right here, but I do really like this chat. I agree. Everyone's being really nice and cool. I appreciate when people have other comments. And like I said, you know, uh, hopefully more even. Combo class can be a place where people have little friendly debates of sorts because there's nothing wrong with what comes across like arguing if you have this overarching agreement that you're like, we're still buddies or whatever. I sometimes have, you know, intense debates with my friends as long as you have that understanding underlying it that you're still friends or whatever. So let's, oh, cat. We'll have that understanding that we can, you know, trust each other as friends even when we disagree in combo class. This time it's Seiji. Hey, Sage. Oh my God, he's sneak. Oh my God. Whoa, I didn't know he could go down there. What? He slipped through this crack. Whoa. That is tiny. He Okay, that's the one I said was really smart and agile. Normally, he goes to the neighbor's yard by hopping the fence. I didn't know he could go through that crack. Oh, my God. Cats are like... Okay, you ever seen there's a subreddit called Cats Are Liquid? Just pictures of cats melted. Oh man, I would. I gotta post dandelion there if I ever <laughs> post stuff, because uh, dandelion is always melted like that. That was so cool. I didn't know that he could go through that corner. 
Somebody said they've been trying to make a connection between modular arithmetic and Western 12 tone music scales. Well, cool. Sometime during grade negative two will be our first combo class music lesson that I'm planning where we're going to look at the 12 tone music scale and we're going to use a clock. So stay tuned because there will definitely be more than one combo class episode that relates to the 12 tone music scale using modular arithmetic for examples. All right. So uh, somebody's mentioning modular since, oh, whoa. So do you remember on one of the last streams, I thought I burnt part of the lab coat. I, I had candles. And I don't know who was here for that, but I leaned on it. And I actually timestamped that part. And the other is true. I was like, the bit where I accidentally did something with my coat. But I leaned on the candle and it lit for a second. I'm used to these being like closer to fireproof. Maybe I got that wrong and I've just been lucky because I was just like leaning over a candle. And it's just like, I lean up and there's like a little flame going out of here. I think, I don't think you can see the whole thing in the stream. It gets kind of cut off. You can see the smoke coming out. And so I just see a flame and I'm like, and blow it out. But it was enough of a flame that look what it left. It actually left a hole. Now that I just noticed that. There's a, look at this hole. It's hard to see because there's like a black uh, shirt under. Under it, that's a black shirt under the hole. So like, there's, where's the hole? There's the hole. So I don't, I'm getting stuck. I'm gonna get tangled and like fall over or something. There, it's hard to see the hole, but there's, it got burnt in there. I can see the hole through the inside. There's the hole. See that little light? So. Somebody says they don't believe there's any mathematics in music. I think they're probably joking, I don't know. But music is funny because it does tread the line of being some things that we cannot explain with just math. They just give us a mood or emotion that are hard to quantify. But there are other things with music that we're gonna do a lot of music lessons. So much of it relates to math. Um, like I used to be into writing rap verses and I have a lot of rap mixtapes I released under other names you don't know about that are online. That someday I'll share this with more people. I think I only shared them with some Patreon people or something. But I've released a lot of rare music. And one thing I was into was multi-syllabic rhyming, where you have rhyme patterns throughout verses. And you have, you know, phrases with multiple rhymes sort of interspersed throughout your bars. And... That was, I didn't think of it as pure math back then, but it's very mathematical. We can like write it on paper. Also the rhythm of certain flows, when you hit a certain rhyme, we can chop down the amount of time in a beat to different things. So like, for example, we're even gonna someday look at a connection between Thrivan numbers and the triplet flow popularized in rap by 3-6 Mafia and then by the Migos. And there's just like a lot of weird math hiding in music. Uh, so it's going to start with the 12 tone music scale. Then we're going to need to do one. Um, that'll be about chords and it might need to be two lessons. We might do one about chords and then one about scales, which are mostly about major and minor. Might need to do a third one about the types of seventh chord and scale. And then we're going to need to do some about rhythm too about splitting up time and we're going to need to do ones about rhyme patterns in vocal stuff so there's a lot of math that we're going to have time to do it's something i've always loved i do a lot of music in my free time i've always warned you that at some point before too long i'm going to start releasing some music here and there on this channel and if when i start releasing bulk music i'm not going to put every single thing as a fresh video on here but I might sometimes have a music video or two on this channel to, you know, with links to a longer project or whatever. Because I do have a lot of stuff like half recorded over the years. Now, when that comes, if you don't like the music, then still stick around because there will still be the fun math and nature and philosophy and such. But I do love music and I'm going to even be doing it more because last year in grade negative one, while I was making combo class, my day job was teaching private music lessons. I didn't have that much extra energy for teaching music 
in a creative way because it was like my day job was like teaching students scales in a way that I was sure their parent would be satisfied with and stuff. I mean, I used my own method, but I had to be somewhat closer to the book of what is expected of certain levels of, you know, learning piano or guitar or whatever I was teaching for a given student. And so now, although I don't make enough money for what most would consider to be a job, I don't make enough money to pay rent anywhere. I live with my family, my parents. So I don't make much money. Since I'm okay living here a bit and I would rather have time to invest in combo class, I quit doing that. And now my job is combo class, which, you know, we're not at the level where I can like move out and have a second set, which I'll keep this set too when I'm able to do that. A goal someday before too long will be to move out and have a second set that will be an indoor or outdoor mix over there. And then I can come here when we want this type of set. But, you know, I've been living here with my parents for a while through these surgeries and stuff. And so I don't make enough money for what most would consider a job. But combo class is my job because I decided to dedicate all my time to it. I don't have many expenses myself. I eat very cheap and stuff. Uh, I don't even own a car. I have very low expenses for my personal self. And so uh, I make enough money from combo class to hire Carlo, to pay for certain online resources, to buy props here and there and stuff like that. I don't make enough to do everything I want to do. So if you want to help Combo Class continue to grow, consider checking out the Patreon in the link. Um, somebody asked if time stopped, how would you notice? Uh, you might not if it stopped and restarted. So maybe it just did. Somebody asked for a book about set theory. Uh, I'm not positive on a recommendation for that off the top of my head. I did have some books here. Uh, the books I happen to have here we'll run through really quick in a minute uh, because I think the another mathematician I want to talk about at some point will do something. Now, somebody said, hopefully YouTube's copyright system doesn't affect me. When we do the music things, I don't think, well, most of it I will just create myself from scratch. We're even going to film some of it in the music shop where I used to work after hours. Uh, obviously with the boss's permission. I'm still friends with her. Now, so we're going to be surrounded by instruments and stuff. Now, we're going to make our own music for most of it. If you mean the one where I reference the triplet flow and other rappers or stuff like that and a history type thing, or like if we do multi-syllabic rhymes and I mention MF Doom or something like that, well, those I might not play clips of the music. I'm scared of the YouTube copyright system. Might just write out the lyrics. So and where they land on the beat. We can write, see, here's the funny thing. When I write lyrics, people think, they're like, what's that weird punctuation you're putting in? I notate exactly where certain points of the measure hit on the words I'm writing. So when I write words so that I make sure it's stored, when I look at the verse later, I have little markers that tell me which phrase or gap landed at the beginning of the beat and landed at different points of what's called a measure. So I have a weird way of notating my words and I'll put other people's things written in that to see uh, an easy way of seeing where things land on the beat and how to line stuff up. Cool. Now to everybody, since we're talking about music to everybody who said that I look like Jack Harlow, somebody get him to rap battle me for charity. I will beat him. I promise you combo Lords. Sounds like I'm joking. I promise I've practiced freestyle rapping, battle rapping. I will beat Jack Harlow. So we'll do it for charity. Somebody set that up. He's all right, but I'll beat him. Nothing against him, but I'll beat him. Now, Somebody asked, with current inflation, does anyone make enough money? Not where I live. I live in the Bay Area of California. Stuff is so expensive here. All of my friends live in tiny shared houses with like five roommates, like barely any room. It's really hard to make enough to survive nowadays. Here's the thing that I realized. Uh, as long as I have internet somewhere... My YouTube and Patreon money won't change when I move. 
and I'm living in like the most expensive place per my money, apart from like New York. I'm living in one of the more expensive places. Like some places in New York would be worse, but one of the more expensive parts of the world. And so just because that's like where I grew up and there's a lot of cool nature and culture here. And that's right now I'm living with my parents in a tiny room at their house and out in the combo classroom in the back corner. But not, it's really hard to make enough money to survive. And when I move out at some point for an experiment, we might have to go to the random woods somewhere else for a little bit. I'm probably going to flock back here and I'll make sure the classroom maintains recurring here as well. But I might have to try like moving out to the woods somewhere cheap somewhere because that might be all I can afford. I do like nature and I want to move out to the woods for a while. Not immediately, but it will come. It will come every few years maybe. Warning. But you know I'm also addicted to making content, so if I ever say I'm going to like vanish, I probably mean like for like three days. So <laughs> to me, like vanishing for a while is like not posting for almost a week. But that's like between my two channels. Remember that the combo class channel is where the even best stuff is. Now, maybe someday I'll go on a road trip and visit some of the combo lords, but that's not in the near future. So, I love you all. Somebody said they want to see me rap and they would pay money. Now, I normally uh, wasn't planning on rapping in this video now. Probably won't. Maybe I can get myself hype enough to do that. We haven't rapped yet. We've done beat making tutorials. I haven't rapped for you guys yet. So, maybe I'll do it later. I don't know. How much money would you pay? Uh, otherwise we'll do it another day before long. So, and somebody says ways to play the clips and cite it properly. So artists take some monetization. You get a copyright. Don't get a strike. The thing is, I just don't like figuring that stuff out. You kind of got to be like a lawyer to do the, or like, you know, research the way a lawyer would to do the whole back and forth between just making sure a copyright thing is ever settled. I just don't want to deal with that. Maybe if I have someone on my team doing that, we can handle that. I'm not a technology guy. I barely like putting tags on the videos. I don't want to have to deal with copyrights, you know? So, and whoever says they could make it out here as well. It is true that to anybody who is like a combo lord, who I'd probably recognize your name from sticking around a while, that I've seen you in my comments a bunch, uh, well, feel free to email me if you're by the Bay Area ever. I will consider letting a combo lord come by if they are willing to help out. I'm often working on filming something or another back here. So, you know, if a combo lord comes back here, a few rules are... Uh, don't give me any gifts that you would feel bad if they get shattered. Wear shoes, so just in case some glass was on the ground. Don't eat anything you see out. Might be a poisonous experiment. And, uh, you know, you might get a little fire near you or a little water near you. And you might be asked to hold a camera and to help out. But you can still visit if you want. But I might be like, hold this camera and film this thing. So, uh, but yeah. And uh, to whoever was just asking about the copyright stuff, I might go into that at some point. It's, um, it's just uh, not my favorite topic because I, I find it, um, you know, it's a whole almost legal world that I don't, I'm not in the mood to study ever. So we'll see if I ever include other people's audio in that way or whatever. I like including handmade stuff sometimes. And although I will need to reference stuff from history and referencing music will be more prone to copyright strike. Most episodes can get away with our own handmade things. So another type of person who can reach out to me are animators. Somebody says stranger danger. I think I'm the stranger to be worried about. I think, you know, think twice before you come to the combo classroom. I'm not going to do anything immoral or bad to you, but like there's broken glass and stuff around here and I might light a fire or something. So it, you know, it's, it's dangerous in a non immoral, in a moral way, in a conscientious way here. 
I know Stranger Danger. I am not going to invite the wrong intruder over here. I'm careful enough about spies. The thing is, we live in such a creepy world where... We're not going to get into this long, but just for people who are worried if I ever give out personal info, you can find anyone's personal info online if you are a creepy and persistent person. That doesn't mean try and do it for me or any other one here, but it means, like, no one's really safe. You got to kind of just trust the world. You know, there's danger around every corner. You got to take a risk here and there. Somebody asked, is there crime in Berkeley? Yeah, there's a good amount. I mean, I don't witness that much. I walk around on the street any time of night. Uh, some would call my part of town, used to be one of the more dangerous parts of town, but now it's getting a little gentrified and getting a little more fancy in an almost annoying way. I almost liked it more when it was like dangerous compared to like fancy. But it wandering around, I have once in my life gotten mugged. So I did get like people robbed me for my wallet once when I was way younger, but I've walked around at night at every time of night in every neighborhood in my entire life for almost 30 years. So one time getting mugged out of 30 years is not the worst ratio of all time. So there's a little crime, but it's, I mean, statistically, yes, there's a lot of crime statistically, uh, especially Oakland. That's right next to me. I'm very close to the city, Oakland. It's the neighboring, I mean, I'm not like right next to the border or anything, but it's the neighboring city to Berkeley is that is one of the crime capitals of the world of one of the at least robbery capitals of the United States, meaning one of the top per amount of people. So Berkeley also has a decent amount of crime, but whatever, just got to be careful. You can't always avoid every risk. If you avoid every risk, what, what uses a sterile life? Now, but nobody better try and look me up because you are going to have some big problems if you come here uninvited. I'm serious. I'm going to say it in a joking way whenever I say it, but we're going to assume it's a spooky joking way because you're going to have some big problems if you come here uninvited. So... Uh, you can reach out if you do want to come here. I'll probably let you f hold a camera or whatever. Now, uh, also to people who email me, I'm sorry I'm so slow at getting back to emails and stuff. I will reply to people. I've had quite a busy week again. But part of that is, like I said, a lot of birthdays this month. It's almost my birthday and there's other family birthdays this month. And so this month's a little more chaotic. But I will make sure to get back to all the people who have emailed me because I do appreciate it. Like some people have sent me stuff that I do want to get back to. So, um, yeah, you know, there's some, I've probably avoided some crimes too by like, uh, being a little like careful. Like, I feel like there's times that if I hadn't been using my wits, right, someone could have like stolen my phone or something. So you do also have to be, you know, maybe a little careful if you're only going to be robbed once every 30 years in Berkeley. But I call that an okay rate. I was young enough that it was like such a crappy phone I had and I had like $10 and like the crappiest phone and nothing else. So it was not the biggest loss. Now, it was scary. This group of people was following me. I was walking home from my friend's house at around midnight or like 11 p.m. or something. And I was like 12 or 13, maybe 14. And I was walking across the street and I saw this group of people that seemed to be behind me that it was like, they seemed to be like matching my pace, like five people or something. And I was like, it's kind of sketchy. I'm going to cross the street. And then they all crossed the street and I'm like, Oh fuck. There were, so I got the sense. Sometimes you can trust your instincts, not that you would react on your instincts in a violent way or whatever. Cause your instincts can be wrong. So you know, don't, if you have an instinct, try and shoot somebody or whatever, but try and dodge whatever. So I had the instinct I was being followed and it was deeply confirmed when I crossed the street and so did they. And uh, then they like ran up behind me. I, I got on my phone because I was like, maybe it'll help to pretend I'm on the phone. Maybe they wouldn't want to rob me if I pretend I'm on the phone talking to someone. But either they didn't notice or didn't care. They came up, grabbed the phone, and one of them, like, grabbed me by the neck, and then they, like, took my wallet and stuff. But you know what I remember? 
more than anything, wasn't like I was very scared for a moment. And in fact, I had a lot of really important notebooks in my backpack. I always had personally written notebooks and I begged them. I was like, please just leave my backpack. It just has papers in it. And like papers, what are you talking about? I'm like literal papers. Like it's like notebooks and stuff. Like my backpack has nothing apart from these papers. Please let me have it. And they did. So they might've been people who were just really low on luck or something, but they were youngish. And what I'll remember is that a lot of them looked like they were like 20 or something. And one of them looked like he was like nine or something. He was younger than me. And it was sad. It was like almost in the midst of feeling horror and fear. I also had this weird, sad feeling of like, wow, this nine-year-old got roped into thinking this is normal. Um, but yeah, scary, but I got over it. And a cat just hopped into the tree. Tree cat. <laughs> Those cats are so wild. That was probably Sage. He came, went through that little corner earlier in the stream. He went through this tiny crack and looped around through the tree. So that's the one time I've gotten robbed in Berkeley. Apart from that, uh, no, uh, don't worry. When I got arrested, it was in Albany. Might be joking. Let me check on how statutes of limitations and stuff work before we go into more details on all that. No, any crimes in Berkeley? No, I committed my crimes in Albany, folks. No, I'm kidding. I was, I was in Albany circumstantially. Uh, and it's not a place called Albany, New York that many people may know. That's the city on Berkeley on the other side of Oakland. So, yeah, it was basically a gang of kids. I was like between their ages where most of them were older than me and one seemed younger. So... People are mentioning drones, uh, flying a drone in front of my backyard. Yes, a creepy person could do that. Um, one of my friends has a drone. We've flying, flown it around here. And one time we flew the drone up here. And he has good drone videos of me. I got to show you folks. I got the marina. There's me like, hey, like at some cool spot in the marina. And the drone like flies backwards. Like cool, like music video looking shots. Now, the... We flew the drone here and then it hit one of these branches up here and the drone like crashed into one of these things and we we're like, oh no, uh oh. And we thought it landed on the roof and got knocked up there. So my friend whose drone it was got a ladder and went on the roof and the drone wasn't there. And then we looked more further and we realized the drone must have fallen into the neighbor's yard. It must have fallen over there. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I should say the rest of that story. Um, basically we tried knocking on the neighbor's door to be like, our drone fell in your backyard. Could we get it? But they weren't home. So one of my friends may or may not have hopped the fence real quick to get the drone and bring it back. Now, Somebody said, my content's on par with Vsauce and Numberphile. I found that to be a huge compliment. Those are two of the best channels. Thank you. I hope you are also referring to the Combo Class channel in particular, where I do think my best episodes are. I put fun stuff on this channel, but the ones on the Combo Class channel, the other one, are more edited and extra cool. And I do have like a, I think I'm back to having one a week out. It took me a week and a half between the last few. I think the next few are just going to be a week apart or so. And they're all going to be awesome. So I'm going to make some playlists of that sometimes soon also. But until there's playlists, you should make sure you go to the video tab that you know all of the, uh, you've seen all the combo class episodes because those main ones are where it's at. Now, here is just where I like mess around on this channel, even though it's so much more subscribers in that channel. In fact, let's note, super cool combo. Okay, everyone make sure you're on combo class because it's close to 32,000. You might be the 32,000th subscriber to the combo class channel. Um, this channel just keeps flying up. It's, wait, wait, combo class, no, combo class needs like 40 more subscribers. So at some, we're almost at 32,000. This channel is like many times that, it's ridiculous. Now, uh, people are curious what happened to me when I said I got arrested once. Now, 
like I said, I might have been joking, but I, I don't know how clear I should be. Okay, I wasn't joking. We'll give more details another time, though. No more details right now. That's some grade negative three stuff. Here's the thing. When, if or when I know that I can make a full living off combo class, I am like, you know, have a place that I know I'll have rent and food in my future for my future for, from combo class. I'm going to be brutally honest about everything in my past. And I'll tell you guys all sorts of stories. You won't believe the stories I wish I could say, but I still don't make that much money from combo class. And I could have to get some other type of job in the future if I... If, you know, if for some reason YouTube kills combo class and stops promoting it and I, it doesn't work on any app or whatever. So you never know if, if I am ever have five or 10 times as much subscribers and income from combo class, then I will be able to be so honest about my entire past. And I want to write memoirs too. I'm going to write some of it in written form and I'll make videos about it. But Oh boy, are there stories I wish I could say. The stories I say are the lightest of the stories. When I tell you about the time I got arrested, even when I tell you about that, it's one of the lightest stories. Now, I will note one thing. If people try and look up an arrest record, there isn't one because this is probably saying too much. You know, if I get a future employer, they're going to pull up this clip and it'll suck or whatever. But I may or may not have committed a crime as a minor and then went through a government program that allowed me to get it off my record before I turned an adult. So now it's not on my record. I'll tell you more details about in the future. Well, okay. That all last five minutes may have been a fiction joke. My combo lords though know that sometimes I might need to say that just for legal reasons, but that I, but that I'm a truthful person and that I, you know, I wouldn't make a type of joke that didn't have some truth in it. Now, I know that's not what a lot of people care about. A lot of people here are good. They don't want to commit any crimes. That's okay. That's good. I'm sorry to those folks that I'm a bit of a punk and I might get in trouble here and there. If you don't commit any crimes and you think you want to follow the laws, that is awesome. That is what we will always recommend as our default. You know, if you're ever breaking a rule or crime, think very carefully before you do it. So our default should definitely be follow the rules and pretty much all the laws. Now, now let's not make guesses, but uh, no need to make guesses, but I will confirm that it was not public nudity or defecation. <laughs> so, um, I don't even know where to start with my memoirs. There's, uh, there's going to be multiple volumes. However, the first book I'm going to write is not my memoir, although my memoir may loop into being an upper layer of it someday. But the first book I'm going to write is part of a very important saga that I want to begin telling. And I'm on the fence of whether I'm going to start publishing it chapters at a time or whether I'm going to try and get a chunk of it as a book together in the near future. But there's going to be several texts from me and it's an ongoing mystery, so I want people to try and read it when I release it, and it's going to come out bits at a time. So I want you to make sure to stay tuned for the new bits. And you can read the new bits without reading the old bits. It's okay to go out of order in the maze. It's going to be a maze anyway. Or ideally, you can read all of them in any order, and then you'll know all the parts of the maze. But make sure to check out at least a few corners of the maze because there's going to be a lot of interesting mysteries and math and comedy and scariness and a lot of weird, weird, different emotions. It, a lot of what I've been saving up over all my work, like I've said, I'm really into making videos. I'm also really into music and I'm also really into writing and the writing comes in many forms. There will also be some textbook-like math book type things I hope to publish someday. So, you know, we will also see my take on what a better textbook might be perhaps someday. So thank you to all the people who are also saying that they like all the other people in the comments because very nice to chat with each other and tell, uh, be nice to each other and stuff. And we 
are all friends here. There's a lot of friends growing in the Discord and stuff, and why not in the comment sections as well? And to uh, somebody asked, is it wise to tell personal stories online? Well, it's not for most people. It's uh, it's almost an all or none when you decide if you're going to be pursue being an online entertainer. I'm pursuing being an online entertainer. I want my job to be people listen to me talk and I do that and stuff. So if you are that, you're going to want to tell some personal stories because it, you're already at the point where if you have a YouTube channel and you make your real name public, which I made my real name public in the credits of my episodes because I was like, screw it. I want to have my real name in these projects that I'm really proud of. I don't care. Come at me, intruders. You will have a big problem. So it's like I decided to put my real name in my face. Even for people who don't consciously put their real name, it usually leaks. Most YouTubers, their real name ends up being available. So if you have your face and your real name available, there's no use hiding the past. Unless you're actually going to go to court about something, then you don't want to talk about what you're like currently possibly going to go to court in the present or future or something like that. You don't want to tell other people's secrets who they don't want to have shared. But I have so many stories that I do want to tell. I like telling stories and I, I want you all to know my crazy past. And so, which comes in many sagas. So I'm going to tell personal stories because I have already decided I'm going to make my face and name public online. And for people who don't have their face and name both public online or aren't somebody who frequently makes their face known enough, often enough that their name will probably leak eventually anyway, then you shouldn't tell stories because then you're putting yourself in the category of being as leaked as the entertainers without getting the stuff the entertainers get. So it's almost an all or nothing. And, you know, since my job is showing my face and I want my name in my credits, whatever, I'm, it's already out there. I also have my mailbox, which is not my home address. It's in fact, not even like anywhere near my block, but it's in the same city. So it's, you know, people who, if I want to have a mailbox where people can mail me fun stuff, then I need people to know what city I'm in. So you got to take some risks when you're rich enough, which I'm not obvious. I've like no money, but I mean, if you are like some celebrity in Hollywood or whatever, you can look up those people's address. It's, you know, you get less and less privacy the more popular you get. And I aim to someday have combo class be well known. So I just already accepted that there will be a point when, you know, people leak information about me. And at some point I will probably have, you know, somebody come by and get arrested or something because they intruded, whatever it's, you got to take some risks in life. So somebody says I don't seem that old, relatively speaking, but a dizzying life. Uh, yeah. Cause I I've done a lot of crazy things over the years. So there's some sagas that are like different portions of my life when I was really into some particular hobby and I had a particular zone I was in and this and that. And so I've been through a lot. And like I said, I almost died two and a half years ago about, and then I felt like I was almost like reborn, not like in a religious way, but in just like a, whoa, I get a second chance at life. Let's work really hard on it. And so I didn't, do have a few memoirs already that make me feel like an old man at times. However, I also feel like a young kid at times because I'm also like, ooh, cool spinny thing, bubbles and stuff like that. Fire. So <laughs> squirrel. So, you know, I'm in a way a weird mix of like an 80 year old man and a six year old kid. Somebody asked about rhythm games. I haven't played them too much. There were some uh, I played. There was like a phase when I would go. There was a friend in middle school, which is like when you're like 12, 13 or so, who I would walk home with because our houses were near each other. And sometimes I would stop by his house and play garage no, no, GarageBand's the one I used to program. What's it called? Guitar Band? Is gu I know there's Rock Band. Guitar Hero? Is that what it's called? Guitar Hero? Um, 
Was that? Yeah, we would play Guitar Hero. That was pretty fun, but it was um, yeah. That was. It's not my favorite. I'm not a video gamer, so it's it's all right, but it's not like a main passion of mine or anything. Now, somebody said being canceled is inevitable. I'm sure at some point that is inevitable if we rise to where we want to get. Because, like for example, the YouTuber Mr. Beast has tried really hard to not do anything cancelable, and people on like Twitter, which is a dumb app I barely use. I only like hear about it from the sidelines, from like using Reddit and YouTube and stuff. Uh, always are trying to find a way to like cancel him for like trying to save a forest in the wrong way or something. So people will, if, if you, if you have enough views, there's going to be someone who's just like wants to get mad at you or whatever. Now, the people who might get mad at me are the people who are used to a conventional approach for education because I'm going to have like certain content that's like I recommend for schools to play and stuff. And then various weirder, crazier stuff I do with fire or maybe someday you'll hear me swearing or who knows, music or whatever. And so I feel like some people are going to get mad at the fact that I believe Combo Class, especially the main channel's episodes, are a pure educational resource, even though I'm going to do some punk stuff along the way. So, uh, people will find a way to get mad. I Also, people are going to probably find ways to get mad about all the old rap songs I made. I haven't listened closely to them. I've probably used some outdated words. Like, I'm not, like, using, like, the N-word or anything, but... I probably use like some terms that like don't come across as good in modern language. And so people will find ways to cancel me. But the thing is you'll see through it if people do that, because you'll see that it's going to be about something that I was not being malicious or bad about because uh, I, I don't harm people with my actions. And you'll see that you will see that. I am actually a good person and that is provable by actions and time and relationships and various things. So you'll see through all of the cancellations because you'll see that, you know, people will find a way to try and nitpick things and that really we aim pretty hard to be moral, even though I do wild stuff like light fires and maybe I'll swear here and there in my own life. I, and other stuff I don't want to talk about. There's, I have morals. I think very hard in my day-to-day -day life about let's make sure that I don't hurt this person's day. I don't want to make this person's day worse with whoever I interact with. Somebody says, please don't use the R slur. It has been used against them and many others before. Um, I don't think you mean something I just said, or if you did, please clarify, because I don't think I said something there. But um, if you mean the R slur for people who are like mentally handicapped or mentally, you know, different in certain ways, then uh, let me note first that I am mentally different too. I've had people call me that too, not because I'm actually like on an autistic spectrum. I've never been diagnosed with that, but I probably would be if you had a really, really microscopic diagnosis, a little bit on certain autistic spectrums. And it is a word, if that's the one you mean, that, um, <laughs> okay. Great gag that Redditor was the slur I used, <laughs> or Remon hypothesis. Um, but yeah, no, so I will admit that like me and my friends would, uh, back when I grew up in the 90s, that was pretty normal. And there's, uh, to use that to just mean like someone being weird or dumb or something. And then I realized when I was, you know, like 12 or 13 or something, I was like, huh, that word I was copying because a bunch of people are using it actually isn't a very good word. I shouldn't use that anymore. 
So I have said that as when I was like 11 as a, that's probably what, the best example. Cause many words I haven't said, there wasn't an age where I was saying the N word or there wasn't, I never was like using gay as an insult. There are certain things that I just wasn't part of that weird language thing, but Probably the perfect example for me is that I'm a little embarrassed that I used to, you know, with my friends, use like the R word for, you know, mentally different people as like a roast to people. And so like not because the people like to my friends, you know, as just the way that you'd use like dumb or crazy or something. So. Then I like outgrew it and felt like, you know, a little ashamed of that. So don't, that's an example, I believe of, you know, maybe someday someone will be able to find a clip where I use that. If there was any video when I was 11 in like a home movie or something and they'll cancel me or whatever, but people pick up language things and can learn that those things change and that those things are actually harmful and are becoming more harmful and they should be cycled out or whatever. And so be willing to cycle words out of your vocabulary. And also don't be too judgmental about somebody who used a word, but then cycled it out. Because sometimes in the past, especially like you read old books, they use really outdated language. And language evolves in a way that a lot of words in old books would not be acceptable to write in a modern book. But we're not just going to throw away the old books. You have to sort of have a lens that the language was different then. And, you know, intention is part of the importance. And that if the intention of the author wasn't to insult someone, but was using a language that's now outdated, you know, it's a really weird blurry line. But my point is that don't be too judgmental of words people use in the past, but maybe be judgmental if somebody insists on continuing to use a word while knowing it's hurting other people. So that's my point, I guess. There are other words I've never picked up and never said that if you say in the chat, you'll certainly get banned. When I talk about I swear here and there with my friends and that I might swear a little bit here and there in future grades or on other platforms. Um, I won't do it in my main combo class episodes unless I put a disclaimer because some families might want to watch those or whatever, or young schools I might do it in the streams. So I'm to people who are really offended by cursing. I'm sorry. Just only watch my combo class channel. I'm not going to bite my language to, I don't even know what some people consider a curse. Some people consider ass a curse. And what if I'm talking about a donkey? So, it's, you know, like some people consider a crap a thing. And there was literally the crapper was like a thing for the toilet was the, uh, this guy called Thomas crapper, for example. And it's a myth that it's not positive if this is true or not, but a guy called Thomas crapper was related to making the toilets was, let's see, was he actually it says his notability was overstated. Now, when I look it up, but there are plenty of words that uh, I don't even know what someone's going to think is offensive if I say or whatever. So I'm going to say things that I think make good sentences and that also for the modern time we're in, hopefully don't offend too many people. And to a degree, you got to be better safe than sorry, but you can take it too far because, you know, I'm not going to like not make any point about, uh, you know, there, I, I'll touch on many topics. So, um, I'm sorry if I ever offend anyone, you can let me know and I am willing to edit my language or whatever. I don't think I use offensive language. I think I am a little brutally honest in sort of my playfully roasting tone. So I'm sure I'll make some enemies accidentally just by them misunderstanding that me roasting them doesn't mean I hate them. Me and my friends actually held a roast. I wish this was on film. There's a lot of my life that's on film, but this one's not. But my friends and I attended and performed had a roast and it's like, okay, 
who wants to sign up to roast? If you sign up to roast, you also sign up to be roasted. So there was like 10 people who were roasting and you had free range of all the other people who were the 10. And we had an agreement. We we're like, you can say whatever you want about each other. We're still friends after. We're going to roast each other. You're a lot. You better go hardcore. We turn it into a joke. It's like, it's not that are you allowed to go hardcore on the roast? It's like, you better. You're going to make a not funny roast. And so me and my friends went so hardcore roasting each other. And I maybe have never laughed so hard. Oh, yeah. Mm, roast. There's also the other type of roast. Like uh, in the sitcom when you burn the roast when the boss is coming over. You know that one? Uh, a roast. Oh, you know what I should get? Okay. I do need to get something to light up the darkness if we stay out here a little longer. Anyone who wants more than 10... So we might just do five minutes of stream or 10 minutes of stream because it's getting dark, but we could do another phase. I could go get candles and go get the first fallen apple and a fresh raspberry. And comment candle if you want there to be another phase of the stream. In any case... Um, either later in this stream or next time, there was one more mathematician I wanted to look at with a wacky life, but we'll certainly come, if he doesn't come up today, he'll come up very soon. It was a guy called Paul Erdish, who, uh, I love him. He was invested in many open questions, literally invested. He put monetary rewards on them. And he also lived a quite strange life. Now, I also never quite figured out what this is. So, what year exactly it is. It's newer than that one, is all we figured out. So, I might need a flashlight if we go candle mode or something. I have a lantern, I think. So, let's see. Okay, it's getting a little dark to be able to look at these with that thing. I think if we're going to continue a bit, which I kind of want to, I need to grab at least a lantern, if not more candles, like we did last time. So remember to comment candle if you want me to be encouraged to do that. I'm going to leave in a second. And right now I'm making room for whatever I bring to have room to light. And then... Oh, and God, this clock. Oh, my God. I need to show you guys this outtake one time. This clock in one of the shorts I filmed falls off the desk. Now, I didn't want to add this to the short because if you make the shorts not that catchy at the end, a lot of people stop watching and don't loop around. So you don't want like a bunch of dead space at the end of a short. So I didn't include this bit that's really funny that's like a few seconds after the main short ends where... This thing was rolling at the end of the short. And then it like really slowly, as I'm just like staring at the camera, like, okay, cool, we got this. Rolls off and falls on my foot. And this thing is so heavy. This thing, like for a moment, I was like, oh my God, did I break a bone or something? I have osteoporosis. Uh, but no, my, my foot was good, but that thing is heavy and rolls. <laughs> Actually, I cut myself on a clock. This was from filming a scene that's for the next episode. The outro of the next episode, I cut myself on a clock filming. Actually, it could be a burn mark. It's either a cut or a burn mark because... Okay, there may or may not be a clock on fire. We'll see. Um, somebody says I should make dehydrated apple slices. I do have... My family got it just last year. A dehydrator. So we can make dehydrated apple slices. And we did last year. They're really good. We gave them around to all sorts of friends. And I'm going to consider two candle comments enough to bring some candles. So we're going to do that. And somebody said I should have cut the video at the apex of the scream, I must have said. It wasn't a scream because it was like this. Basically, the short was like, I'll find the clip later. But it was like, and that's the fun math fact. And then you see this thing roll, roll, roll. Ah! 
So it's got it's just like a weird wince and stuff. It's just the thing is, there was like three seconds between that and the normal end. So if I cut that time out, it would have looked super staged. If I just like all of a sudden the clock falls and it's in a different place. And if I keep it, nobody's gonna even watch till there. People have such short attention spans on the shorts page. It's like they took the short from the name of the shorts and decided, oh, that should describe my attention span length. Okay, so I'm gonna go get some candles cause it's super dark. If anybody else new comes in and wonders where I am, say that I'm on a very important cryptic mission to illuminate the darkness. And whoever asked for a blooper reel, I will say some of the bloopers have gone on Patreon for different types of tiers. So there are a few bloopers I've put on Patreon. I need to put certain things just on there because I need to fund this operation somehow. I pay the camera people and stuff. So I want to make an, a blooper reel for this channel too of all sorts. And I just need to work with more editors because I don't have enough, oh, another cat. I don't have enough editing time to do m more than what I'm doing right now to add too many bonus episodes. I even have more footage than is edited right now. I need to work with more editors. That'll give me more time to film and focus on studying and filming and stuff. But when I do that, I have a bunch of blooper reels I wanna do. So if anyone's interested in editing one of these, um, from a mix of stuff that's online and clips I would send you, email me if you're interested in either. These are compilations I want. Uh, and actually, here's how we could do it. We'll do, the compilation will be all of the so-and-so from grade negative one. So we'll say the cutoff is before April of this year. All of my footage on either channel before April of this year, as well as some bonus stuff I would send you if you're helping me with this, anyone, we can go, into, I have at least two. I want at least one that's all the times clocks fell in grade negative one. And I want one or that clocks broke or something happened with crazy with a clock. And I want another that's all the squirrels in grade negative one. Now you're probably not gonna get them all in the streams. It's okay if anyone wants to help me with doing that, but skipping the streams. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to find all the squirrels in the streams. That'd be an insane task. But if anyone for some reason is going to watch all of my streams from forward backwards, and this is the first stream you're watching, and you're going to watch all the other streams backwards in this order, so you haven't seen them yet, while you watch them, take a note of every squirrel. Leave a comment. Okay, if you ever see a squirrel when you're watching, or a cat, when you're watching one of these videos after the fact, when it's processed as a video, comment the timestamp the time it is, and squirrel or cat. We want those logged down. Then when we make that blooper reels or reels in the future, we can just like go to there and we'll be like, oh, cool. These combo lords commented that there's a squirrel there. There's a cat there. There's a clock breaks there. He lights his sleeve on fire there. Okay, we're not doing that again today with the candles. This time we're going to not lean on them. All right. So... Uh, somebody says they hate thinking of me in hell. Well, how about this? If you think that I am able to spread good knowledge here and you believe in hell, maybe I can tidy up hell and make it a better place. Maybe I'll take one for the team, get a few burn marks to do a little bit of good in the, uh, I was going to say world, but whatever you call the meta world you uh, that is believed in. But, you know? So... I'm going to get candles and uh, the first apple that fell really early. An apple should not have fallen off one of the trees yet. It's probably going to taste really underripe. It probably has something weird with it. There's one tree that always goes early with the apples. Sometimes it goes two seasons where it like tries to make a second batch of apples in the winter. And then like they're all long and shriveled. Showed that on a stream a while ago, this long apple. And... That um, one of them fell from the tree. So we're going to see if it's good or if when I bite into it, it tastes really underripe. And this time we're not going to lean on the candles. Like I said, if anyone new comes tell, and they ask where I am, tell them I'm on a very important quest to illuminate the darkness and I'll be back soon.
Spooky. Whoa, it got really dark really quick. So, something ain't right, but they don't know what, according to the comments. You know what ain't right? The candles ain't light yet. They're not lit. It's trying to rhyme it. Um, somebody, wait, they were bummed they ignored my idea. Oh, no, uh, I do like your recommendation. I saw the comment. Uh, I can't answer every comment. There's a lot, and I have a lot of topics I want to talk about. So the next mathematician I need to talk about was going to be Paul Erdish. But I will consider looking at that person in this stream. If I don't have time looking at Mileva Marik in this stream, then I will certainly look her up in my own time. I am interested in all the comments, and I often look up stuff from the comments after the fact, can't always answer them in the stream, but remember that if you consistently leave comments, some of them will get answered, and if there's something you are really interested in, you could comment it on a few successive streams, and then I will be sure to see it pop up. Uh, I also get distracted from earlier stuff I see in the stream, so if I see like five comments, I might reply to one and then get so distracted I miss the other four. Now. I've got the little line of candles here. Let's move our computer a little further. Now we're going to spill a lot of dice doing this. That's okay. We got a dice carpet going. Oh, our beautiful dice carpet. Oh, and this beautiful uh, calculator. Oh, I love this baby that... Oh, my most viewed video twice over. This calculator to help me on it. It made it look relatable to people. Me fiddling around on this calculator at the start of the video. People loved so much that that video got me like a fifth of my subscribers. <laughs> Maybe not, but like literally like a tenth of the subscribers probably came from that calculator video. Now, for some reason, everyone loves my 11 video now. I need to make more simpler math hacks on the shorts. Now that I'm not putting all the shorts to subscription feeds, maybe I will start doing more simple, like, little math hacks that I didn't think merited, like, oh, it's a really rare fact about math. Because everybody liked how to multiply two-digit numbers by 11. That did so well that I might have to just do more simple ones like that. And, it, like, when I named a video on this channel, like, the most quit a video I filmed in, like, ten minutes in one take, and it's like, why seven is weird? You got, like, more clicks than any of my, like, main combo class episodes I spent, like, 30 hours on. So, <laughs> I'm not sure how many hours I spend on a main combo class episode, but I typically spend up to five hours filming them and many hours editing them. So, buy Bitcoin, someone says. Well, maybe. Be careful if you ever get into that. I would say investing in things is not a bad idea, but whatever you invest in, try not to get hooked on the gambling aspect of it too much. And note that the money you're investing could fluctuate and you should more so invest your extra money as opposed to your crucial money. I guess we can't see the calculator. Uh, the cal uh Candles. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. My nice line of candles. We even have a few more, but I think this is enough to illuminate the darkness with one more fun item, which is our plasma orb. Now, oh, damn it. I need a converter. Okay, so, eh. We might not get the plasma orb unless... Oh, I didn't bring the apple either. Damn it, I got distracted by candles. Okay, if I run inside again at some point, I'll get an apple and a converter so we can do the plasma orb. We're going to roll with candles for now. If I don't have the apple today, we're going to have a lot of apples in the future, don't worry. The, this tree made an early apple, but in about a month, there's going to be five apple trees full of apples. There are so many. We're already... There are too many apples that grow on the tree that they will get moldy and smushed if they all grow side by side. So you have to kind of like pruning, remove some of the apples that grow in bunches. If you want them to grow to their fullest, most beautiful extent, then you have to take off some of the neighbors while they're young and murder them. And what we do with those young murdered apples is we 
toss them to the cats and they like playing with them. And to people who think dogs play more than cats, I don't know if you've played apple with my cats. My cats are pretty good at batting apples around back and forth with me. I throw them an apple, they start batting it around and they get ready. And they're like, where's my apple? You got another apple? And I throw them an apple and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta show you folks, it's so cute when they play apple. We're gonna do that. Okay, that'll be in the next snack break. The next, I did an episode in grade negative one that was called Apple Science on the Convo Class channel. And we tried mild versions of some thoughts I had, like apples aren't good soaked in lighter fluid. Apple, how do they float? Well, some of the basics. But I thought, you know, we're gonna need to find a way to do crazy apple science this grade. So we need to do a crazy sequel with all these apples. We need to find some crazy, ex okay, what is a chemical reaction that it takes a lot of apples to do? That you could only pull off this strange experiment if you had as many apples as I'm gonna have. So, <laughs> somebody says I should put the candles on a plate. Are they thinking because it's going to leak onto the table? Uh, I don't care. This uh, desk is built for having things on it. We use things in the combo classroom. And here's our philosophy with that. I'm going to make a video about this someday. But in short, I think that using things, particularly if I can put them in a filmed project, even if it breaks them quicker, is better than not using them. And so I'm gonna just do all sorts of stuff with my items in the combo classroom. I have certain items that I pick that do not get that treatment. For example, the computer I'm filming on right now, I am hyper careful with that thing. I will not let a drip of wax get on that computer. But the rest of the classroom here, baby, these globes cost one and two dollars. I don't care if we get some wax on them. So this desk was free. I, f I got the desk free. I picked it up from someone who needed to get rid of a desk. So this desk was gonna go to the dump. It was gonna go to the trash. We're getting a whole grade of teaching out of this thing. I don't care if it tips over early and breaks or whatever. It, we're gonna lose one leg at a time probably. This desk was made to be used and we, it was already used by a previous owner and now we're getting some more life out of it. So, we're going to not care if we get candle wax on the desk. Unless you meant that you want them to be higher and you want them to be elevated so you can see them better. In which case, let me elect some items that we can raise these on. The reason I say elect some items is that these items will get candle wax on them. So we don't want to do it on every item. I will elect this clock. This clock will be allowed to get candle wax on it. Now, we have more places the candles are. I will, okay, now it's gonna drip on my computer. Okay, how about there, okay. I will elect these portions of the clock. I don't care if it falls on me. You worried I'm gonna get some wax on me, folk? Nah. Think I care if I get a little wax on me? It's not that bad. It's kind of fun. It feels warm. Like, I swear to God, it's not like a weird kink or something. It just, uh, it feels actually warm and not like burning hot. So, not that I recommend trying it. There's other tricks you can do too, you know. People are way more scared of fire than... I, no, no, okay, actually, don't, no, no, do not take that to mean that. People are way more scared of tiny contained fires than they need to be. People are not more scared of fire in general than they need to be. If you are scared of fire, good phobia. Uh, big fires, really bad. Big fires destroy huge stuff. Big fires, terrible, bad, bad, bad. If I do a big fire, you can trust me that it's secretly very contained. It is not going to cause any chaos outside the classroom. I promise you, if you see a big fire in the classroom, you can guarantee yourself in your brain while you're watching, I don't know what in the combo classroom is going to get destroyed, but Demotro has some method of hoses and stuff to make sure this will not move outside the combo classroom. So know that in your brain if you see a bigger fire than this. But when I say people are more scared of fire than they need to be, I mean like, it takes more than you realize to burn you sometimes. You know? It's, but <laughs> don't copy that. I've done that 
before. Don't you? You'll probably burn yourself the first time you do that. Someone asked, "Am I this talkative in real life?" It, you know, it depends. There, I, there have been times where, like at a party, I've felt awkward and I haven't talked that much. When I'm with a close friend, or my family, yeah. And my family's converting some old videotapes right now. I'm going to see if there's any good footage of that to show you folks. It's going to include videotapes of me when I was tiny. And when I was tiny, I did enjoy chatting like a madman. I, uh, there's tapes of me just like ranting about aliens and creatures. Not that I thought they existed, but just like fictional worlds in my head. Aliens and creatures and lands and wild stuff. So, yeah, I'm pretty talkative, but here's the thing. I spend a lot of time on my own. I'm also a little introverted. And so I my talkativeness sometimes comes out in my notebooks and my computer documents. And so often my talkative nature when I'm on my own comes out as a form of almost neurotic writing that I don't mind embracing the neuroticness because I've decided it is productive and one of the things I want to do with the world. All right, let's balance some more a little more precariously because the worst case scenario is they fall on the desk. These are miniature tiny things. And if anyone's worried about fire, I do have a hose right there. Do not worry. This is completely safe. Do not copy though. I just want better. Ah, I just want better lighting here. I feel like I can get two on here. Okay. So, somebody asked, do I think that aliens exist? That is a good question that I want to make an episode about. It's also some a topic that emerges in my fiction books. Like, at some point in my fiction books, we may encounter aliens, whether it's the first book or later. But... I think aliens exist in the universe, but I don't know if they have visited Earth. And I think that a lot of the UFO being alien hype is overrated. I like the idea of aliens somewhere watching this someday, but that the only we still have to do more work. They're only going to zoom back and watch this part if we do really cool stuff in grade negative three, everybody. So <laughs> I realized, you know what we're going to do in 2025? That is the year I'm going to make sure three even gets. Okay, I, I'm not going to show the calculator right here. I'll, I have a calculator. We're going to do it on my beloved calculator. No, wait, is it? Is this thing solar pa powered? So my calendars are solar powered. Okay, it does have power. I don't know if it's from the solar or from the other stuff. But if I take not next year, okay, so this is the cool thing about the next two years. Next year is our tetrahedral year. We're going to be looking at Pascal's triangle all year because everything is tetrahedral because 2024 is a tetrahedral number. What about 2025? Well, our base shows that it's kind of 5 e. You can tell from the way it's written in our base that 2025 of a thing is divisible by 5 at least once. And you get a gut feeling it might be divisible by 5 twice because it ends 2025. It's true. It is divisible by 5 twice. It has 5 squared in its prime factorization. However, you know what else it has? It has 3 to the 4th power. It's quadruply 3 then. You can take 2025, divided by 3, divided by 3, divided by 3, divided by 3, and get a whole number. It is quadruply 3 then, and that is the year 3 then is going to get in the dictionary. So just watch it. We're going to put in some work over this year and next year. And Threven is going to be in popular dictionaries by the end of 2025. Or because of the work that we do in 2025. Might possibly could take another year or two. Where'd the lighter go? I need to relight these things. Hmm. Where did I put that lighter? Hmm. Where did that go? Hmm. Here it is. It's under a globe. How did it get under there? Okay. So, because I need to relight these, and they keep 
I'm only gonna keep one up on here. That is the amount that can stay stable up there. When you put two up there, I guess it always falls. The ones down here though are useful, so I'm gonna relight those because they cast some extra light. Yeah, it's getting wax on the desk. Who cares? Anyone who now watches the next combo class episodes I film and sees some wax on the desk will know that they were there for the stream when it happened. Ah! Ow. The bit that burns you is trying to light the candles when they're at a weird angle and the fire from the lighter, like staying on your hand for a minute. Um, now, what else do I want to allow to be sacrificed? By sacrificed, I just mean allow to get wax on it. Because, here, this old book thing. I need some raised candles so we can actually see them in our scene. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna use all the candles up on raised positions. There we go. Now we have our rare candle zone. Somebody said they saw some small part of Jeopardy today and someone had negative money. I have a soft spot for Jeopardy. My parents often watch Jeopardy and they don't watch many shows on TV. One of the only shows they sometimes watch is Jeopardy when it comes on. Um, and I think it's a pretty good show. I think it, you learn stuff when you watch that compared to other shows. In fact, I had a Jeopardy phase when I was much younger. One of my close friends was really into it and had a Jeopardy computer game, and we would design Jeopardy games for other kids in the class. And we were inspired by Jeopardy, made games very similar to that that were based on random facts and stuff for other kids in the class. And in fifth grade, when me and my friend did that, when we were like 10 or so, the teacher let us do it in class a few times, showing like this Jeopardy-like game that other kids tried. So, uh, it has been three hours. It has been a long live stream. And somebody is bringing a satanic ritual. That brings us back to the beginning. At the very beginning, somebody said, they don't like satanic stuff, and I asked them to specify and said, do you mean when I light candles? So somebody does, somebody else thinks that is satanic. Uh, is that satanic in a bad way? What is bad? Or maybe they think it's in a cool way. Maybe they think we're just trying to conjure a cool thing. I think stuff like the occult is quite fun. I think it is very cool sci-fi, like not necessarily to be believed, but fun to hypothesize about. Now, let's see. Somebody's noting stuff about pentagrams. We haven't fully gone into pentagrams, but we did talk about the golden ratio recently, and the golden ratio is hiding all over pentagrams. So, if you hate pentagrams, you hate the golden ratio. Now, is somebody saying negative money in Jeopardy, though? I don't think you actually get, I don't think you have to pay the Jeopardy staff when you uh, end up with negative money. I think you just don't get a good prize. You get like the worst prize or no prize. I don't think you have to actually pay them the negative amount. If you are, ne I know some rules. If you're negative before Final Jeopardy, you don't get to play Final Jeopardy. And people do get negative. It happens often-ish. Uh, there are some funny times when people go really down. And uh, there's actually some funny clips. Like, that's the type of thing that I want to live stream uh, on another platform sometime to not worry about copyright. I have, I've seen some really funny clips from Jeopardy that I could remember to look up of like the craziest moments when people's scores were really messed up. Now, maybe I should do a game show where in the fine print it says, if you have negative money, you do have to pay me. And I make it really easy to lose points. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so... Thank you all for joining me here. I was going to look up here. The other, okay, that put one out. 
another strange mathematician to look at some strange things, but we have sort of become the strange mathematician ourselves. Uh, I, I knew that as I talked about other strange mathematicians, we would be um, mirroring a different type of strange mathematician on our own. And the mathematician we wanted to look at for a moment, which I'm still going to do, is this fella named Paul Erdish. Now, okay, I am getting some wax on the computer. I got to be, okay, maybe it's a bad idea to use the computer. Okay, um, folks, maybe we're not going to use the computer and look up that today. What we'll do is another time soon, I'll dedicate a stream about this strange fella and some of his interesting open problems. For now, we're just going to chat for a bit and feel free to leave some comments and stuff. Noting that I realized it has been more than three hours and is very dark, we will wrap up the stream pretty soon. We're not going to hit that fourth hour. So leave any comments that you are interested in being seen. As another reminder, there's going to be a bunch of Combo Class episodes that are cool coming out before long. In less than a week, probably, I'll have the next one. And then less than a week from that, I'll probably have the next one. Because there's a weird schedule that I want to do to line some dates up. That I think it's likely I'm going to put an episode out on the main Combo Class channel in just a few days. Even though I put one out recently. Because I have another that I want to put out on a particular date about a week after that. Now... Also, there will be random fun stuff on this channel. And, of course, if you want to chat with more Combo Lords, our Discord and subreddit and stuff like that. Now, there is a lot of other fun mathematical topics that I almost want to jump into. But some of the topics that I could rant about in a stream, I'm working on solidifying into full little episodes and or bonus videos that... While the streams are fun, um, some of the ideas I am focusing over to the Combo Class channel more this month. So extra, keep your eye on the Combo Class channel this month. And this channel will still have a lot of fun stuff mixed in. And do be on the lookout for, if you want to see the shorts I've been dropping, and you don't normally watch the shorts page, where you'll probably encounter them anyway, then... I linked the Combo Class Shorts tab in the channel here, which has six shorts I've put on that channel so far. They're pretty cool. They're little fun facts. Uh, I don't watch shorts myself unless it's for a few creators I really like. So that's really just for the people who are like, don't really like shorts like me, but I'm in one of those few creators they like watching it for. Otherwise, if you're on the shorts page, you'll probably see it. And if you don't want to see it, you're not going to get bothered by them because I'm going to be uploading a bunch more shorts again, but they're not all going to go to notifications or subscription feeds. Now, we have other fun stuff planned, but like I said, this month is my birthday, and this month is another birthday in my family, and other stuff. So, it's going to be a little more random and less promises of exactly when the dates will come out, even though I have some ideas in my head of some stuff. I also will be throwing a birthday party, and I think I wanted to get some of my friends to make a cameo in one of our episodes, because you guys don't even know about... I do have a social life that a lot of people would probably think I'm joking about, because they only know, like, my weird, introverted-looking, like, in this weird corner self. But I do have a separate life where... I am myself there too, but where um, I hang out with a bunch of friends who I have made a lot of different stuff with before. Like some of them are on the rap music I've dropped in the past, but a lot of them are hesitant to make cameos and videos because they people get camera shy if they're not used to being in a video that a bunch of people are going to see. But I'm going to convince them at my birthday party to do some sort of fun cameo for one of the snack break episodes I have planned. So I'm going to buy some weird fruits before my birthday 
And then I'm going to do a rare snack break. Uh, I'll get a few clips for that for when I film that snack break later this month or next month. Film the rest of it. I'll get a good portion. Ow! Okay. <laughs> I'll get a good portion of it to... Um, okay, that distracted me. Um, <laughs> I'll get a good portion. But like I said, it's not actually that hot. Uh, um, the... I'll get a good portion of my friends doing something wild for the snack break that I want to put out later this month, too. Remember that on my Combo Class channel, where my best episodes go, every sixth episode or so is sometimes a weird snack break or other type of science break. Now, uh, I do have the wax in the cut that I mentioned getting from the clock is not a great combo that burns a little bit but the rest of it's not that bad and i think i'm gonna log off before long because i'm realizing my hands are too covered in wax to do the computer right if i touch the trackpad that much on the computer i'm like getting waxy stuff on it kind of need to at some point just wash my hands and reset all the stuff this new computer that i got since the old one broke has a remarkable battery it hasn't been plugged in and it's not even half dead. It's a remarkable battery. I guess the batteries get worse over time, or maybe my old one just sucked. The old one, after half an hour of stream, I had to plug it in practically. This is true, the battery's not even half dead. That is great. 70%. Wow, I guess if we didn't even have our charger, like it's not out here right now, we could stream for like five hours, seven hours. It's crazy. So thank you to everyone who's joining me. Uh, much love to the frequent commenters who stick around and hang out and join all this stuff. And to anyone who watches in the future, too, you are very awesome. I'm going to add some very basic timestamps to this at some point before long. Like here was the section we talked about globes. Here's the section we talked about the killer mathematicians. But the whole end bit, I'm probably just going to timestamp, like, chatting about rare personal stuff for a long time or something. So leave a comment with a timestamp if you watch any of this later. And there's any particular moments where you're like, hey, that would be a good, helpful timestamp for any other combo lord to know. Like, that's where the squirrel came, or that's when he started talking about this topic, or that's when something funny happened with the candle or whatever. So... Hello, unfortunately, uh, Sam, we are uh, logging off momentarily, but I did want to bring out our candles for a spooky vibe anyway, and we are going to do a campfire more full stream at some point before long where I'll do an actual campfire. However, for now, it might be time to extinguish our candles. And I love you all so much. I will see you again in whatever bonus content comes out on this channel in the next cool episode that I'm in the middle of filming for Combo Class that should come out in maybe just a few days, sometime less than a week. And I will also see you in whatever bonus content you haven't seen that is linked in the description here. So take a peek at those links in the description. Love you all so much. Consider checking out the Patreon or at least the free Discord. Uh, but the Patreon does really help us continue the combo mission. I have turned down some sponsors recently to not put ads and stuff. So the Patreon people are basically our sponsors. Now, love all of you though. And I'll see you again before long. Have a good day, night, or afternoon.